The opening siren of the season for Port Adelaide and Glenelg and a big day for Port Adelaide and coach Russell Ebert today celebrating 433 games. That's an Australian league record. Centre of the ground, free kick already going Glenelg's way and they'll boom it up towards half forward. Peter Kerry won the toss, he's kicked towards the Anzac Highway end. Stephen Kernahan up high, couldn't bring it down. Players will go to ground. Copping knocks it out the back with Dermot, a hurried snap off the ground. McGuinness, Kernahan. It's cleared by Fianchi, gets it quickly onto Owens on the half back line, into the centre again for Port Adelaide. Russell, a quick handball to Bradley and Port Adelaide into attack for the first time. Ebert across the ground, grabs it beautifully. Onto Owens, who's moved down from the half-back line, pops it in short, and Port Adelaide settle down at the centre-half forward line, and Stephen Williams will line up for their first shot. Rover George Fiatti playing on the wing. Stephen Williams, 23 years of age, 65 games to his credit, as he lines up, with just a little against the breeze, a beautiful straight shot to get Port the opening break. One goal, then they'll get to school. Yes, well, it was all Port Adelaide then. They, they shared the ball between two and three and four players to finally find a short pass on to uh, the boy who just finished up with that particular goal. Stephen, uh, Williams. Stephen Williams, number 10, playing out of a pocket. He, he lost me a bit there. Usually Ruck rose from a half-forward flank or even plays permanent back pocket, but he got the goal and uh, a very quick start by Port Adelaide. Should be a great clash in Ruck today. Peter Gary up against Russell Johnston. Johnson, of course, missing quite a bit of last season through injury. The bounce favoured Kerry, couldn't do much with it. McDermott, he's caught by Dwayne Russell. And the umpire will bounce up in the centre square, and Russell's, uh, Dwayne Russell's gone down heavily. And there'll be a yike on. Is there ever? in pre-season games but uh, just about all players involved in the melee in the centre square and, and Kenwood has been reported reminiscent of the game two years ago at the Bay when uh, uh, David Holtz and Tony Giles clashed round about the same spot actually Keith Wayne Henwood and his Wayne first been game pinched, he? for the Glenelg side by the look of it uh, the umpire came up turned him around had a look and that's where the free kick's being paid Russell Bradley uh, Russell Bradley Bradley will uh, move it down towards Russell Ebert at the full forward position and down go the players again by the next Played neck. Did it's Phil Harrison who gets up with the ball and the free kick. He's only about 20 metres out. Port Adelaide get a chance to put another one on the board. And the umpire fairly quick to find a free uh, as the ball went down that time. It was uh, three or four stouches developed early on, and the umpires will want to uh, reassert authority very early. Harrison's first shot looks good. Port Adelaide, two straight goals, but they'll get the score. Well, I can't say I saw the free kick there, uh, fellas, but um, there was a melee of players in the square, and Phil Harrison emerged with a free kick, supposedly around the neck. I guess there was something there, but it could have been half and half. I felt he had possession of the ball as he was tackled, um, but only the umpire can interpret the way he saw the, uh, the incident, and uh, Phil Harrison gets what you might call a gift goal. During that... Back to the centre bounce and Peter Carey, the captain of Glenelg, had a long talk to the umpires during that last goal. But Port will take it away from centre game. Williams' his handball was intercepted by Simons. Wobbly old kick towards Seabone. Smith from behind for Port spores away. Out towards Walsh. He'll do battle with Bradley. Bradley's first to it. He goes to ground and recovers first, however. The whistle's gone and Bradley's off. The luxury of the bounce, but he's going to be called back on Glenelg's that. ball. So Glenelg will have the free kick on about their half forward line. Gavin Walsh. Gavin Moss being brought right up to that half forward line for the free kick. And for the first time into the full forward position for Glenelg. Ball to ground. Players over it. It's cleared by Port Adelaide. It's Lawson trying to force it out for them. Mark Lawson playing in his first league game for them. Number 20 for Port Adelaide. As he comes back, you'll see he's a stocky, blonde headed young man. But now, Johnston versus Kernahan as it's down in the pocket. McGinnis grabs it, goes down with it. Play on, says the up. Stringer with a chance. Out to McGuinness again. Oh. And there's a great mark in defence. Darren, Darren, Darren Smith. Smith. <laughs> Darren Smith for Port Adelaide. He's going to get himself 15 metres. The offender being Stephen Copping for the Bay. Smith's kick towards the centre of the ground. Up high looking for Russell Hamlet at the back. And Dwayne Hamlet pushed Dwayne Russell.
Marshall out. He turned the eye of the umpire again. It's interesting because the Bays shifted Henwood on to uh, Dwayne Russell in the Escort Cup Series when the Bays kicked that 10 goal last quarter and Henwood had an effect on Russell. Will he today? However, it's uh, back to the play in the centre of the ground. The umpire's going to let play go on. Tony Hall, the handball out towards uh, Alan Stringer. He's kicking in danger, going the way of the Bays. Back in the centre of the ground and the Tony Hall's kick taken by Hall. Mm. He's not too well either. Bit groggy, Tony Hall. Very courageous player, this fellow. So Tony Hall, right from the middle of the Bay ground. Bay's into attack, looking for Kernahan, but in the front, Johnston. It dropped back, a whole kick behind play, and he picks up a mark at centre-half back. Plays it on quickly. Ward's oh, come unstuck. Ward's got to get on it quickly enough. Ward's just out of trouble, are they? No, a free kick's been paid. Which way's it going? Robin, Robin, Kidney. Kidney. Robin Kidney. I think you'll find Lawson's first rover today, uh, Keith. It's a big job, isn't it, against this combination from the sure Bay? Is. Robin Kidney, the first, uh, well, maybe a scoring opportunity. He's a long way out. He's only a small fellow. He should be powerfully built. It's a massive kick. It'll go right to the square. They'll set themselves. Johnson couldn't pull it down. And it's touched through a rush score for the Nelk, their first of the day. They're one point, trotting Port Adelaide, two straight goals, 12. It's interesting that Russell Johnson is going wherever the ball is, where Peter Carey started to kick behind the play at that particular moment. Uh, and Russell Johnson really is going down into the Glenelg forward line unopposed. Ben Harris kicks out. This time, a great mark by David Kernahan. Strong pair of hands. We'll turn it in, 45 degrees out. I should say 45 degree angle. <laughs> it's a bit further out than 45 <laughs> metres. It's a beautiful kick with a little bit of breeze. Straight through. First goal to the base. They're 1-1 behind Port's two goals. What a classic goal by David Kernahan. He marked the, uh, the, the free kick, uh, kick in by Russell Johnston and went back, deliberated, and kicked the ball a good 50 to 60 metres and has split the centre. There's the mark by David Kernahan. Really strong pair of hands, this lad. He's very hard to beat in the air, and he'll have quite a height advantage over his direct opponent, George Fiacci, today. Fiacci, normally a rover, is playing on a wing. Five points of difference, approaching about the six-minute mark of the first quarter. Carey again against Johnston. Carey got that tap. Bradley scores off hands, picked it up beautifully. He's got it in trouble. Marshall and Stringer grab him. And it'll be Marshall, the free kick for the Bays. We'll drive them over the half-forward line. Back to the flank, the spaces. He's heading. Coppings out on the lead. Smith behind. Good grab by Stephen Copping. Similar position from what David Kernahan just kicked his first goal. Stephen Kern uh, Copping's first kick of the game. Short lead was on. He'll go back and steady. The angle you can see. He drop punt. Looks good from this angle. He got the distance. He has the big fly in the centre square and takes through for another rush behind. So Glenelg got one goal, two, they're eight points now. Port, two straight kicks, 12. Not renowned as a long kick for goals, Stephen Copping, but by gee, he was only half a metre out then, that, uh, that jag. Ben Harris, the fullback, kicks out for Port, a long kick towards the centre, looking for Darren Smith, firm mark. Smith at the centre half-back position, looks to go to the outer side, he does. The umpire decides that the uh, Glenelg player ran over the mark, and he gives him 15 metres, a very generous one. Rather well, tough decision, that, because Peter Carey just went forward when Darren... Smith decided to switch the play to the other side. Smith plays right down the middle this time to centre half forward. Fly from the back. Down into the pack it goes. Stephen Williams underneath for Port Adelaide. The umpire decides that he'll have it. Very good crowd in attendance at the Bay today. If Oak Bank had not been on, I think he would have struggled to get a seat down here. And why not? Two great rivals, Port and Glenelg. Players go to ground, Russell again on the bottom of the pack, and the umpire can see no avenue of escape, and he'll bounce again on about the centre-half forward position for the Bays. It's incredibly congested there, Rick. Carey in ruck for Glenelg. Over the top, Johnston wins it. All Bay jumpers there, Carey on the ground again. God, he works hard, doesn't he? Kidney tries to force it out, does so. Plenty of pressure there, Bradley with the ball, he's dragged off it. The umpire says, another bounce, thank you. Umpire Schofield will bounce still on the half-forward line for Port Adelaide. Johnson and Carey, no one able to take it out. Chance for David Kernahan, he's bundled off the ball. However, here's a chance for Kidney. He goes to ground, and that's the ball for the umpire. Base supporters don't like it, but I think it was there. Geneva will take the free kick for Port. Touched off hands, play on will be the call. Carey, solid tackle, McDermott. Still Port Adelaide. Kidney and Geneva again in on the bottom of the pack. We'll see another bounce yet on the half-forward line for Port Adelaide. Very congested at this stage, both sides applying plenty of pressure as umpire Schofield bounces yet again. What a strong bounce. 
A little bit of room for David Kernahan to get a kick away. And by has a look, decides it was fair. Nice tap on, chance for Stringer. Ooh, got a bit of elbow for his trouble. Port Adelaide in the clear at last. Craig Ebert. Ooh. Well, Ross Gibbs in the square, Barrett and Gibbs, the two flyers. And Ross Gibbs will come down with it. We've seen him fly on many occasions, only small, but he gets up high. Plays on quickly towards the outer side there. Bradley couldn't do anything. Barrett makes up. He's sandwiched off the ball. Two on one. Tony Hall couldn't do much with it. Here's his opportunity. Gets away from Ginnifer. Handball away. The umpire will bring play back. 30 metres. What's happened to the advantage rule? Allowed her off and away then. Blimey, it was about the first time the ball broke clear for five minutes. Exactly. <laughs> Whistle happened to go. So Glenelg into attack, a long kick into the forward pocket. Kernahan in front. Johnson has a grab at it. Over the line it goes. Once again, see how Johnson's going down for that, those kick-ins where Peter Carey hangs around the centre by himself, giving Glenelg the rebound player unopposed. Dead hit in ruck, it'll come off the hands. Chance here for Smith, it looks to be. No, Anderson it was for Port Adelaide. He's got a wild left footer. That's high. Gavin Walsh from behind. Umpire's seen another free kick, so stop start play. Bradley, Bradley will pick up the free kick for Port. Bradley was in front, interfered with. He kicks it down the outer side. Mark attempt by Barrett doesn't come off the base. Kick forward though wildly. Marshall into the middle. David Kernahan. What's the popping advertising? Popping second mark and second kick. Yes, he's leading Darren Smith to the ball. Darren Smith enjoys a, a big height advantage over Stephen Copping. So if the ball comes in uh, with any sort of height, uh, Darren Smith will almost certainly mark it, but in the run of the ball, Stephen Copping has now won out twice. Chance for the Bays to go ahead here. They're one goal, two. Port Adelaide, two straight goals. Copping's kick is way off, though. Not this time. Just scores a point with it. Went off one, three now against Port's two goals. It's a bad miss by Steve. I feel that... Um, he was entitled to kick that, that goal from that position. It was directly in front, about 30 metres out. Ben Harris at full back for Port Adelaide. Smith wants it down the middle of the ground. He's going to come grandstand side. High, looking for Simpson and Johnston. It'll come off hands. David Kernahan's second grab. He's on the bottom of the pack. The umpire will bounce up. Grandstand side of the bay. Four points of the difference, first quarter. Carey got the tap all nicely. Ripped by Craig Eber. Chance for George VRG. He'll break through the centre of the ground. Long kick, Walsh couldn't take it, two grabs, spread off brilliantly by Hamwood off hands. Glooms oh, one, right up towards full forward area, Stephen Kernahan up high, McDermott off hands, snaps towards the white points, close, where's he put it off line? So Glenelg having trouble finding the big white sticks there, one goal, 4-10, Port, two straight goals, 12. Comment on that Wayne Hamwood kick, Graham. It was, a, it was a, a monster of a kick, wasn't it? I've never seen the boy have uh, such a long kick before, he um, tends to go a little shorter than that. Stephen Curtis, the kick off this time for Port Adelaide, goes to the outer side. Looking for Anderson, can't find him. Johnston grabs it, fumbles, he's in trouble. Brett Owens, the half-back now with a chance to break clear for Port Adelaide, put them into attack. Ooh, scrubby Whoa. kick into the middle. And a nicely bit read of play there. Over the top, Gavin Walsh. Gavin Walsh the kick. Courageous mark. Walsh's kick again up high, looking for Stephen Kernahan. Ben Harris at front, spot off hands, Alan Stringer. Which way will this bounce? This the one that Why did they have? They've hit the front. Two goal fours for now. Port Adelaide, two straight goals. Well, Alan Stringer read that like a rover. The ball was uh, knocked to the ground. He whipped in. Uh, Gavin Moss uh, projected a reasonably long kick into the forward line. Stephen Kernahan was well uh, defended by Ben Harris. Alan Stringer rode the falling ball. Round his, uh, what you might call, a, an oblique angle to the goals, and it just wobbled through. Nice goal. Educated goal. Carey against Johnston. The Bays had the break, uh, or at least they've got the break now. Port Adelaide started brilliantly. Two quick goals, but it's been Glenelg ever since. Bradley tries to turn the tide on that. Forced forward by Lawson. Now the ball's in the pack. Still in the corner of the square. And Port Adelaide having trouble across the half-forward line, Graham. They are, definitely. They're getting nothing at all out of the half-forward line at this point in time. Johnson, nice little tap back to Dwayne Russell. It's a wild kick away. Ross gets on the well card one. Held Ginnifer down on that occasion and took it with his right hand. And he booms one screw punt. Back towards the centre of the ground, Vic Simpson. John Simpson for Port Adelaide. He's got some height. Plays on quickly to Dwayne Russell. Dwayne Russell's playing up the ground a bit here. Dwayne Russell on the run. Over half forward, Port Adelaide go for the first time in a many minutes. Here's a chance. Crowd and across. 
Geneva can't get the ball to boot. And Glenelg will recover from here. Beautifully pushed out. Henwood with the ball. And he goes down into the pack. And just over the line before Craig Ebert for Port Adelaide can grab it. Golden chance from begging for Port then. They should have scored a goal in. Ball in the right forward pocket area for Port Adelaide. Kicking towards the school end here at the bay. From the back. Got up very high. Harrison. Ebert smothered off the boot. Tony Hall. Got a quick handball away. The umpire's found a free kick here. It's going to be a push in the back. Stephen Barrett. So Barrett will leave for the base. This will be his second kick. He's got 15 metres as well. Comes grandstand side. Flying Gill from the back. Alan Stringer read it beautifully at the back of the pack though. He's off one bounce. Left foot up towards half forward. Greg Anderson in front spot. Sported it away from Seabone. John Simpson now for Port Adelaide. Simpson turns it to the outer side. There's a chance for Craig Bradley. Craig Bradley on the move. Beautiful two bounces. Settles it down. Port deep into attack now. Oh. And there's a chance. Almost a chance for a number four for Port Adelaide. Didn't Dwayne come Russell. off though. Dwayne Russell as now we see Glenelg recover. Simon's beautiful hand. Simon's kick up towards Robin Kidney. Small taps it in front of him. Chance now looks to be Walsh. Beautiful smother by Greg Anderson for Port Adelaide. He's still got the ball in front of him. Kidney makes front spot. Puts his body over the ball. He's won himself the free kick. That's the place you've got to be. You want the ball. Glenelg winning the free kicks. Kidney's kick high. Kernahan's out from full forward. Smith the flyer as well. Offhand Stephen Curtis for Port Adelaide. He had to get rid of it in a big hurry. It's copping. Taps it towards McGuinness. Curtis is with him. I'd say the umpire blows his whistle. He does, and we'll see a ball up centre half forward position for the Bays. Umpire Schofield moves back. Johnston in ruck for Port Adelaide still. Carey with him for the Bays. Oh, lovely read off there by Fiachi. Runs into trouble though. Gets out of it. Or will he? Yes, he does. Gets a left footer away to the outer wing. Looking for Bradley. Bradley in front. Couldn't take it. Pushes it out nicely. And Russell, who's moving in deep to get his kicks, booms one in towards the centre half forward position. Front. Ebert in front, much too much height for him. Jennifer picks it up though, runs in, should get it. And he does. Port Adelaide, three straight goals. Well, two goals for. Well, I guess that goal makes up for the goal Tim Jennifer uh, mucked up five, uh, three and a half minutes ago. I felt he should have scored uh, last time in the Port, Port Adelaide last line of attack. This time he made up, but he rode the falling ball very well. Typical Rovers goal, that one and Tim Jennifer has had an impression on the play already. They're raving Jennifer and, um, and Mark Lawson out of the forward pocket. The ruck raving duo seems to be uh, Craig Ebert and Stephen Williams. A change in ruck. Stephen Kernahan replacing Peter Carey and he'll go up against Russell Johnston. Dirt dead heat. Marshall, wild kick. Boom directed, however. Gill booms it up high. Fly from the back will be Grout and Hall's in front. Sport away. Barrett. To Marshall, who will direct it. McGuinness should pick up the crumbs. He's off balance. Geneva goes to ground. Empire's whistle will blow. Shakes his head. He's going to bounce the ball. He didn't see it for he kicked there. Dwayne Russell was the man on the bottom of the pack. I think you'll find Tony McGuinness a kickless at this point in time. Number one rover with the Glenelg. Ball just ahead of centre for Port Adelaide. Johnston down to Russell. His kick was stopped, though. Grabbed by Lawson. He ends up with the ball, but... Too much pressure on him and another bounce. This time on the grandstand wing. Stephen Kernahan against Johnston. Kernahan got that tap to McGuinness. He had to get rid of it in a hurry. David Kernahan handles back. The umpire's found the free kick. It's going to Tony McGuinness. Left yeah. footer. Second kick right. over the half forward line, copping at the back. Chance for Seabohm. Hurried at a left foot kick. Which way will it bounce? Towards the boundary line. The Bays have moved it up into attack. We we'll see a throw in the left forward pocket area. Beautifully read by Seabone then. He was on the run past the pack. He just couldn't settle down to get the kick in. So we see the ball thrown in right in the pocket for the Bays. With Carey down deep to take it. Tries to grab it out of the air. Stringer, another shot. This time not close. Didn't get a chance to settle down. Gwinnell, two goals, five. Bit off target. Fourth, three straight goals. Remarkably, all of Alan Stringer's three kicks have been round the corner kicks. He's got them and just sort of tried to twist them in. One's, one's gone through the centre, the other two have missed. Ben Harris's kick out towards Russell Johnson. Simons the crumbs. He's got the speed. This will be a goal, boys. Dean, one bounce. Oh, he's been caught off balance. He's going to have to make room. Here he does. Left foot snap for goal. It's high. It's Simons running about 30 metres there. Rucks river bounce, but he slotted it. 
Well, now we've got three goals, five. Port, two straight kicks for two goals. Well, three goals. I predicted that'll be a goal. Tony Simons on the run is a very hard man to stop. I really thought he would have um, he would have kicked the right foot uh, goal originally, but he forced himself around uh, onto his wrong side, and he, he still started the goal with a nice left foot, educated twist of the, the ball to foot. And uh, a top goal by Tony Simons, and he loves a goal coming in from his wing. 20 minutes in and there's a change in ruck for Glenelg as Stephen Kernahan comes onto the ball. Johnston still there for Port Adelaide. Geneva. Little kick forward to the half forward line. Lawson couldn't pick it up. Down goes Gibbs. Play it on. Russell has the ball under Bradley. Bradley looking outside for Geneva. Geneva's in a bit of trouble there but gets the kick. Looks good. Geneva's second goal. Port Adelaide's fourth straight goal behind Glenelg's three goal five. But they just hit the front, haven't they? Well, that was an amazing goal because it was almost radar controlled by Craig Bradley. I'll, I'll swear he didn't see Tim Ginnivar out the corner of his eye. He seemed to know he was there. He fed out the hand pass, as I said, almost uh, without looking, and it found Tim Ginnivar. And uh, while they were watching the replay, he did see him. <laughs> Tim Ginnivar had a very quick kick, very uh, very quick to put the ball to the foot, but it worked. It was a goal. And Porter back at front. Both sides able to score at either end here at the bay. If anything, the breeze is probably going slightly towards the Anzac Highway end, but uh, we'll see him scoring at both ends. Should make way for a great game. Bradley's playing very well. Stringer. Stringer. For Glenelg, pushes it to centre-half forward. Curtis, the back pocket player, in trouble for Port Adelaide. McDermott. His kick's wild. Half-forward line. Port Adelaide to clear. Simpson. Towards centre wing, looking at Wayne Russell, scored away by Hamlet, he's got a big punch on him, Lawson couldn't do much with it, BRG, he's got the fumbles as well, down he goes, recover to Lawson, he's got running players, that's Tim Ginevra, what's he going to do with this one, it's going to strip kick this court and smother, tapped on by Lawson to Bradley, Bradley's got time, he'll line him up, drop punch, straight over the outside's head, Port Adelaide, five straight goals, they're 30 points, Vanilla 3-5, 23. What a good player Craig Bradley is, he was just hanging around like a leaf on a vine, and the loose ball came towards him. He had one look, two steps, and it was a goal. Well, he's a fine player, Bradley. And Tim Ginnivar's playing well also. They're, they're both having a big effect on Port Adelaide's running game at the moment. They just seem to be popping up unopposed wherever the ball is. And uh, David Marsh must play a little tighter when Port had the ball on Craig Bradley. Coming up towards full time in this first quarter, Johnston and Kernahan in ruck. Ball taken out by Simpson for Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide in the open again. Lawson tries to run it. Rich him, he gets it away though. Stephen Williams has a shot. Will it curve back in? Not quite. It's the post. Port Adelaide score their first behind on that. Five goals, one. Winnell, three, five. Isn't that amazing? Their first behind and it's the poster. Stephen Barrett. Long kick out. Almost reaches the centre of the ground towards the outer side. Off hands Kernahan. Bradley will be first to it. Craig Ebert should shepherd him. Bradley's got plenty of time. He's going to have a look towards the pocket area. Russell Ebert at the back of Duthie. Ebert. Two touches, can he beat the boundary line? He turns, he can. Hooks it back towards half forward. Browden's there, he's got his eyes all on it. He's taken it. So another opportunity for Port Adelaide. Browden is playing in a luxury position. That's his first kick, and he's um, he's playing permanent forward pocket. He's not having a run on the ball. What they're doing, they're shifting Stephen Williams, uh, Craig Lawson, or Mark Lawson, I should say, and George Fiacci, and uh, Tim Ginova. Oh, around the pocket in the half forward line. Brown's kick was a good one up from the reserves of last year. Port Adelaide are moving along. They've got five goals, one now on the board. Six one, make that. Just changing over to Glenelg yeah. 3 5. Now there's the switch. Brown just kicked the goal and it's coming off the ground. Being replaced by David Baker. Isn't that remarkable? It happened again. It happened last Saturday. We saw um, Jamie Thomas. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, Jamie Thomas kick a goal and get replaced. So I think the deal is kick a goal, boys, to come off the ground. <laughs> Baker going into defence for Port Adelaide. Ball is bounced with Kernahan and Johnston to contest. Johnston wins it and into the hands of Kidney for the base. Doesn't go very far. Another bounce. The umpire to bounce up, centre of the ground. Anyone's game so far this first quarter. Kernahan, who we got up very high and got the sit. Seabone couldn't do much with it. Marshall can running player. Tony Simons is elusive. Covers a lot of territory, this boy. Doesn't matter which wing he plays on, he's everywhere. Gets his handball towards Walsh. Can he recover? Or bundled off the ball. Gets the handball to McGuinness. Away they go again to be Marshall with a long kick in towards the full forward area. It was a superb kick. And that's a quick answer for the Bays. Four goals, five. Port Adelaide, six-one. And that was his third kick. 
Yes, I'd say it'd be fair to say at this point in time, Craig Bradley's got the call over David Marshall, but uh, he's answered by my slight criticism by racing over to the far side of the ground, getting himself involved, picking up uh, a loose ball virtually and spearing it right through the centre. And that's a David Marshall skill that uh, I've seen him do at training quite often. He, he really knows where the goals are at Glenelg Oval. We're into time on. Eight points the difference. The Magpies in front, kicking against a slight breeze at the bay. Marshall tries to tap it on. Kidney dives over the ball. Pick up by Stringer over his head, looking for Simons. John Simpson in the way for Port Adelaide. Simpson turns inboard. Oh, the handball doesn't come off. Pressure here. Brent Owens on the wrong side of the ball. And out of bounds. John Simpson doing a great job at centre half back, actually. Uh, I'm very impressed the way he's tackled John Seabone. Throw in on the outer side. Carey and Johnston. Almost a dead heat chance for Greg Anderson. Hooks it onto that left boot. It's high. Doesn't cover a lot of territory. Russell was the late fly. Couldn't pull it down. Simons again. The left foot kick ill directed. Bradley picked that one out easily and he's going to take off for Port. Up towards the half forward air. Russell Evans made a long lead out. Gibbs to be in front. Couldn't pull it down. Ginova hooked one out. The whistle's gone. Craig Evans the free kick. Craig Evans plays on quickly from half forward. Booms it right in towards the square. Johnston's resting there. Over his head, can he get the kick on? Has he touched? Big decision for the goal umpire. He says it was kicked through without the touch. Port Adelaide, move away. What great agility by Russell Johnson. He'd be six foot seven, I guess, or maybe I'm giving half an inch taller than what he really is, but uh, to turn around and kick that ball like a rover was uh, excellent uh, work by the big fellow. He's actually six foot five looking at my stats. He looks like six foot seven with his arms, or well, looks seven foot five with his arms outstretched. That was a fine goal against Chris Tooth. He's resting in the pocket now because David Bake is taking over the ruck work. 11 goals so far. Kick this quarter. Looks like we're going to see an avalanche of goals. Carey and Johnston again. McGuinness a little tap forward. Bradley, a quick little give. It'll be Craig Ebert or Stephen Williams chasing through the centre. It is Craig Ebert. Now it was Williams to Ebert for that offline kick. And only the second point now on the board for Port. They're seven goals too. Glenelg 4-5. Actually, Port Adelaide are doing better out of the middle uh, than Glenelg at the moment. Doothy's kick to the grandstand side. Better pushing and shoving in the pack. It's against Carey. The umpire saw it. So Baker, who's come onto the ground just in the last couple of minutes, will get his first kick in the game. That move's paid off because Rusty Russell Johnson, the full forward, has got them a goal already. Oh. Away. Maybe the mark should have been taken. Wayne Hamwood using a bit of strength there on Lawson. I suppose it was in the back, but uh, poor old Wayne Hibbert's being caught undone by the umpiring a little bit at the moment. He's playing the body, that's why. I suppose they're right. I guess you're right. Russell Johnson's made front spot. It's spalled away. It'll come to ground. He'll be first to it. Looks to be a little Ginova. Quick little handball to Johnston. He's kicked smothered off the boot. Socket away towards half-back. Chance for Carey, the big fella. He's got Simon Sluice. Greg Anderson read it beautifully, however. Now a chance for Bradley. His kick had an airy, Ebert towards Biachi, David Kernahan, and finally it's loose. David Kernahan's kick, though, picked up by John Simpson. He doesn't hang about. Playing well. Short kick. Looking wide. It's picked up all right. Inboard to Stephen Williams. He's in trouble, though. Oh, brilliant play there, running through. Phil Harrison keeps it moving. Down it goes in the pack, though. Only about 30 metres out. Yeah, I thought a free kick might have been against Russ Gibbs then for holding. I saw Laurie Arden have a hard look at it and decide that there's a little bit of possession by the player underneath of underneath Ross Gibbs. The bounce, not a high one. Carey got up high, he's going to try and take it out himself. Finally, it does come out. There's a wild snap towards oh. the goal. Which way is going to bounce? It's hit the post. Well, I missed who kicked it. Which would have been Williams. one of the goals of the day. Didn't favour him, however, and a minor score for Port. There's seven goals. Nine now. Glenelg 4-5. That's their second post, uh, Rick. The kick out from Gibbs this time. Stringer high for the base, couldn't pick it up. Even on the bottom of the pack. Ball comes out, but not before the umpire's blown his whistle, so... I can't quite work out Russell Evers playing himself at the moment. He's coming out of full forward, obviously. Hanging around half forward, I'd say. Russell. Wayne Russell. Found Bradley if he runs for it. Doesn't want it, Ross Gibbs. Oh, no, didn't favour him there. Right. Bradley should run into this goal. Oh, oh. oh mistake by Craig Bradley. You remember that one. Wow. Seven goals, four port, one elk, four, five. That staggers me. Colin, uh, young Bradley could have run right in then and almost moved it through. He elected to do a backward flip kick. Missed it. Doothy's boomer in towards the middle of the ground. What a kick. Better carry free kick. This time it was uh, Carey in front position. Going for the ball. He picks up the free kick. Being held by David Baker. 
handball on towards Wayne Hamwood. Hamwood, he has got a long oh. kick at him. That's covered another good 60 metres right up to the full forward area. Kernahan couldn't do much with it. Coughing's grabbed by Curtis. Whistle has gone. We'll see a bounce up. So, players being moving between both ends. Certainly wouldn't be too many players catching cold out there. He kicks like a mule that Wayne Hamwood. I think as that ball goes out, that's two kicks from the full-back position. Both boomers. Yes, and uh, Stephen Kernahan can't get to the game at the moment, fellas. He's had one short run of the ruck, but he's been camped at centre-half, uh, full forward most of the game. Copping grabs it out of the air on that throw-in. Gets it to McGuinness. McGuinness left footer. Ooh, look right close. to swing it back. Not much in it. Glenelg, four goals, six now against Port 7-4. It's Tony McGuinness's first scoring shot for the game. Renowned for his sharp shooting around goals. He's had three kicks of the match, and that's his first scoring shot, as I said. Stephen Curtis, undecided. Lead on Greg Anderson. But Made he, a lot of ground, Greg Anderson, to give Curtis a lead. He hasn't had much say in the game either, Greg Anderson. Two, Two kicks. kicks so far this quarter. Baker runs in for Port Adelaide to take this oh. knock. Battle on between two other players there as Anderson picks it up, booms it out towards the outer side. Stephen Barrett couldn't quite hold it. That ran again. Swoops on it. Pings it in towards the half forward position for Port Adelaide. Johnson couldn't get a hold of it. Russell Ebert can't pick it up. Recovery here. Doosley. Good football, Chris Doosley. Straight to Craig Bradley, though. Craig Bradley doesn't waste any time, does he? He's off. Play. One bounce and a shot for goal. He's offline, however. How about Bradley? Take a mark and let's go. Well, what a Seven game. Goals, He's had five Port. Craig Bradley's had ten kicks. In fact, that ends the first siren. The first quarter, I should say, here at Glenelg. And what a quarter we've seen. Port, seven goals, five. Glenelg, four, six. Craig Bradley's on fire in the middle of the ground. 17 points the difference. Port Adelaide in front. This time they have the breeze behind them. Maybe worth a couple of goals now as the sea breeze moves on. Johnston whips it away first of all. Gets it to Russell. Doesn't come off though. Henwood at centre half back. Booms one out towards the grandstand wing. We've seen some big kicks from this man in the game. Oh, plenty of pressure there. Anderson manages to uh, bustle his opponent over the line rather too vigorously. Schofield moves in and says Gavin Walsh at your kick. Copping's made a lead, that's where Walsh is going. Also Kernahan's there as well at the back, Ben Harris, he got the hand to it. Smith's bundled off the ball. Kernahan, Kidney now. He goes to ground, push in the back, has to be. So Robin Kidney on this acute angle down here at the bay in this I'll tell you what, he's area. A, he's a great kick for goal, this little fellow. Even from that position. He's able to kick this. He's, he's got a bit of a hook, kick. bit of a hook foot he's got. Robin Kidney's third kick so far in the game. It'll go across the face. Stephen Kernahan will fly, it'll be punched off hands, and uh, Tim Ginevra for Port will relieve. Ginevra gets the kick away despite the pressure right to the outer side. David Kernahan lets it run out in front of him. At this point in time, the Port Adelaide Rovers are winning around the packs. Tim Ginevra and Mark Lawson. So the ball in, half back line for Glenelg. Or oh, for Port Adelaide, I should say, because Glenelg can attack this second quarter. Port Adelaide now with it, though, move it away through Fiachi. Into the middle, Lawson. Ooh, manages to get it over the head. Brenton Owens has moved up from the half-back line. Gets it. Oh, holding the ball. Must be. What? No, no, no. He, he paid the around the neck. He paid the neck. Did he? Yeah. yeah. Brenton must have known that because he held on to it. He knew. Russell Johnson came out. Couldn't pull it down. Russ skips. Wild kick out. Chance here for Lawson if he can recover. He turns. 40 metres out. Skies up the two goals. Will That's it be not. touched? No, it's off hands. Back still in play. Still an opportunity for Port Adelaide. What can Williams do with it? He evades, gets the wild handball out to Phil Harrison. Maybe it wasn't a wild handball because Harrison slotted it. And Port the first goal this quarter. They're eight goals, five. Glenelg, four, six. That first it came about by Ross Gibbs just getting the ball and kicking it. Very uncharacteristic of Ross Gibbs because he's a normally uh, great um, you know, kicker of the ball out of the fence. But he just got it and kicked it at that particular moment. And uh, it landed in the arms of a Port Adelaide player who I thought almost kicked the goal from... Uh, about 40 metres head on, but the ball finished up in the hands of Phil Harrison, who started the goal and uh, made up for the earlier, not error, but earlier um, loss of a chance of scoring. Peter Carey for the Bays against Johnston. Johnston, if anything, just wins it down to Bradley, but he couldn't get it anywhere. Jennifer tried to carry it with him. Ball still in the pack in the middle. The umpire finds a trip. McGuinness with the ball for the Bays. Only way to go. Go high to Stephen Kernahan. Kernahan's at the back, Copping was at the front. Gill couldn't do much with it, but a chance now for Simpson. Had a good opening quarter for the Port Adelaide. His kick has been well marked. Wayne Stringer. Wayne Stringer plays it on quickly inboard. Gibbs from the back. That's a oh, kick, see? Lovely kick to Tony Simons. Get 
15 metres against Anderson. Simons plays it on quickly now. Beating Anderson. Towards the half forward line, looking for Copping in the front. Coming from the back was Kernahan, broke the pack up, and a free kick will be played to Kernahan. Push in the back from the back. I think that's Steve's first kick for the game. He's got this as his second, uh, so you're pretty close, Graham. Yeah. He hasn't had a direct shot for goal for the match. Ben Harris standing the mark. Now, Steve, it is a magnificent kick for goal. I think you'll find he'll go awfully close to kicking this one. It's a long, straight kick, just a little offline. So, Glenelg go to four goals, seven, Port 8-5. Yes, well, uh, Glenelg at this point in time can't get their champion big man into the game as yet, but uh, it'll come. Curtis comes grandstand side. Baker flying with Henwood down a long way. Players allowed to go on. Geneva, hurried little kick. Chance now for Anderson. He couldn't do much with it. McDermott's bundled off. Marshall, can he tap it out? He does. Finally, the whistle will go, and we'll see a ball up this grandstand side. We've played about five minutes of the second quarter. McCary against Baker. Baker trying to make front spot. He missed the tap. Gets it second time towards... Uh, Crowd on it was finally Fiachi with the kick out. Gibbs oh. tapped on by Williams. Chance now for Stephen Williams if he's got the pace. We may have been leg. Now plays allowed to go on. And we'll see a ball up towards the edge of the square. Port Adelaide's favour. Great umpiring there. I think a lot of umpires would have thought the boy was tripped over. He wasn't. He tripped himself. The bounce. Only about 20 metres out. Johnston forces it. Carries it through for himself. Stephen Williams has a look. Over the shoulder kick. One point only. Eight goals, six Port Adelaide, Glenelg 4-7. Yes, that's a hurried snap by Stephen Williams. Uh, I think he's got two or three behind to his credit now. Three to be precise. He's been a little costly in his shooting for goal. Hit the post on one occasion, as I recall, but uh, he's got to straighten his leg out. Chris Duthy looking for Big Carey. He's pulled away from behind by Baker. Here's an opportunity now for Port Adelaide. A little VRG, maybe to Harrison. as a back to VRG's collared. Chance for Stephen Williams again. Wild handball comes backwards. Harrison the kick. It's high and handsome. we will have to fly for this one. Johnston couldn't pull it down. doothy has got his nose over the ball with Fiachi. Oh, there's a push to McDermott. Stringer. Finally, Geneva comes out. Well, that's his it's kick. The post. Well, how could you miss that? Five metres out and Geneva's slotted the post. Amazing game for Paul. <laughs> you miss the obvious sometimes and you kick the impossible. Uh, and Tim Geneva's... Uh, put a block in his copybook again there. He's missed a couple of they so far and uh, he's kicked one to he's kicked two. Kick out from Duthy. Long to the outer side. Looking for Carey in the waist. Baker. He flicks it on to Fiachi. Fiachi booms it in towards the centre again. Everybody's spoiling. No one trying for the mark. Now Russell turns onto the right boot. High and too wide. One point only. So neither side being able to well, get a kick on the board at this stage. The Port Adelaide side are definitely right the back's better than the at this stage. They're picking up the loose ball more often than the, their counterparts. Tony Simon screaming the ball over this side. A little collect to go down the middle of the ground. Gavin Walsh. Nice mark behind Brent Lowens on that occasion. The run on play is coming. That was the fifth uh, mark for Walsh. Copping. Missed it. Simpson. All gone L back here. Gavin Walsh should be first to it if it bounces his way. It's two core players coming extremely quickly. One of those was Harrison and he managed to prevent Walsh getting that kick in. Yeah, top tackle. So the throw in. David Baker streaming in for this knockout. Not slightly into attack for Port Adelaide. Anderson tries to dive over it. Lawson turns it to Anderson, missed him. Russell Ebert gives himself time, centers it. Beautiful play on Stephen Williams from Craig Ebert. Williams right into the square. This could go through and it bounces the wrong way. So Port Adelaide go to eight goals, nine on Glenelg's 4 7. Stephen Williams registers his fourth point. He kicked one goal for He kicked the first goal of the game for Port Adelaide and has since registered, as I said before, four behinds. Port have kicked one goal for in the second quarter. High flies. Stephen Williams in front having a few touches. Lawson read it beautifully. Nice handball to Dwayne Russell. He'll line up the big white ones. Has a kick. It looks home from here. It is. Dwayne Russell's got his first of the game. And Port Adelaide have got nine goals, nine now. Glenelg 4 7. Dwayne Russell's seventh kick. Well, it must have been Dwayne Russell's been threatening danger for quite a few moments in centre half forward this quarter. He finally got, uh, got the ball between the big sticks. I just noticed that Russell Eber's gone back to a forward pocket now. And uh, they're playing Dutch and Drakes with their forward line and probably confusing uh, Glenog a little. There's Dwayne Russell now shooting 
for goal and to get his first major for the game. And, uh, he's playing strongly at centre-half forward. In fact, they're winning in most key positions for that late. They're winning at centre-half back and centre-half forward and winning in the middle of the ground. Got a different ruck line-up in this quarter with Stephen Kernahan against Baker. Kernahan manages to force it forward, but it's picked up by Bradley. Stolen there beautifully by Glenelg. David Kernahan picks it wide, looking for Copping. Copping turns. Can he keep it in? At this stage, he does. Picks it up. Flicks it in towards Stringer. Stringer has a look. He's got right somebody in the square. It's McGinnis. Put it down. Glenelg, 5-7. Port Adelaide, 9-9. Nine, nine. Well, there's Tony McGinnis. Feeling well satisfied with that one. He finally uh, got a chance to score a goal for Glenelg. Staying in the pocket. And Stephen Copping drew the player towards him. Gave it to Alan Stringer. Who popped it over to Tony McGinnis. He finished off the work with a, a right foot jag for goal. But uh, he could have almost needed it through. Easy goal. Approaching the 10 minute mark of the second quarter. In ruck, Baker and Kernahan. Oh, Baker got up high. Kernahan was down before the ball even came down itself. Dwayne Russell couldn't do much with it. Scoop comes out the back. Kidney gets his kick away up towards half forward. Copping, Smith. Neither player able to bring it down. And another chance for McGinnis. No, it didn't sit for him. Curtis, desperation. Now Smith for Port Adelaide. Good football by Simpson. And that's one way to get out of defence, Port Adelaide. Good football by Port Adelaide. And Port Adelaide get it into their half forward line. Now the run is on through Lawson. He's oh. going to turn in almost the trip. Still got it. He's run a long way. Puts it into the centre. There's Craig Ebert. It's over his head. Taylor Bays with possession. Big one from David Kernahan goes high and only about 15 metres. Simon's almost the grab. John Simpson over the ball for Port Adelaide. But it's McDermott who gets it out to Kidney. Kidney on to David Kernahan. Can he get the kick away? He does right down the line. Looking for McGuinness. Free kick is paid against McGuinness on Stephen Curtis. The decision was quite right. I, I can't see what the crowd are booing about. Curtis will go the long handball to Craig Ebert. The running player will be Smith for Port Adelaide and he'll go towards the outer side. Ross Gibbs, big fly from the back, couldn't pull it down. Marshall against Bradley. Neither player able to get possession. Tim Ginever covering a lot of territory. Yeah, Undecided. Goes for the short little kick and he's picked out Harrison. Good footy, isn't it? Yes, it's quick and it's furious. Well, no Harrison. quarter given, no quarter being asked, as they say. Harrison's third kick coming up. The angle is acute. Must leave it's made a lead, but Harrison's decided he's going to have a shot for goal. Drop punts on its way, the umpire moving across. And Harrison's offline, a minor score. Port, 9-10, Glenelg, 5-7. Yes, well, uh, Phil Harrison is playing a will of the wisp game up there in the fourth line. Hasn't done a great deal, but uh, that was well done. Just didn't finish it off, I think. Well executed kick. Port Adelaide 26 points up as the kick comes out from Duthie. It's a beauty into the square. And a great mark from Kernahan on the kidney quickly. The Bays run through centre. Looking for Copping. Oh. Copping's got it off the pack. So Smith now, he's stolen it. Port Adelaide jumpers everywhere. Gill, the half-backer, has time to run and look. In towards centre-half forward. Looking for Russell. Oh, almost the take. Taken down beautifully. Oh, the ball. ball. Gavin Walsh. Strong tackle of Wayne Russell. So Gavin Walsh for the base. Comes grandstand side. Fly from behind by McDermott. Couldn't pull it down with a second grab. Brett Lowen's on the bottom of the pack for Port. And we'll see a bounce up grandstand side. Chris McDermott hasn't been in the play much today. He's had a couple of kicks. Henwood went up against Baker. Baker got the tap. McDermott, Ebert. Chance for Marshall. He'll scoop it on. Tony Simons. Curtis into his back. And holding on to the decision. For Tony Simons, the opportunity to drive the base right to the goal square. Copping. Centre half forward. Could pick up 15 metres of his... Uh, a little bit lucky, but uh, no, the umpire says that was all in the play. So Copping lines up. I've seen a player in Melbourne reported for that for time wasted, knocking the ball out of the player's hand after he's marked it. 30 metres out. Stephen oh. Copping. He should kick this. He's got one point so far in the game. And that looks pretty good. Goes across a little too far, does it? Yes. One point only. Yes, he just hooked it. It faded away at the last moment. Normally a reliable kick in from that position, Steve, but it's just not happening for him today. Ben Harris's kick will go to the square. Johnston spalls it away from Gavin Walsh. Biarchi went without it. Russell Johnston's got it tucked under the shoulder, under the arm up here, I should say. The umpire will bounce in the centre of the ground. 
Johnston and Kernahan. Freddie Lowens it looks to be for Port Adelaide. Well done. Left foot kick. Wayne Russell couldn't do much. Anderson tried to go with it. He went without it, but uh, Stringer for Glenelg. Stringer finds out the back. David Kernahan. Glenelg back in possession. Going down the outer side towards the wing. Looking for brother Steve Kernahan. Didn't come off. There's Stringer though. Nice give to Stephen to uh, Stephen Kernahan. Here's Henwood coming in from the back line. Has a look. Stab to McGinnis. So he can kick them long and he can kick them accurate and short as well. Tony McGuinness lines up. Hemba's no. playing a centre-half forward. Now John Seabone's gone to centre-half back. Switched, switched by the uh, Bay coach. Certainly need this one, uh, Glenelg, because at this stage they still stand down 26 points. And we're uh, 15 minutes into the second quarter. Sixth kick coming up for Tony McGuinness. That's a better one. Glenelg get six goals eight now against Ports 9-10. Well, Tony McGinnis has kicked both goals scored by Glenelg this quarter. And uh, he's becoming a menace down there in his attacking line. Here we have Stephen Kernan popping the ball over. Where we find Wayne Hembert finished up in the end of that one. It wasn't really meant for Wayne in the first instance. He did a grass, a grass burning pass to Tony McGinnis. And Tony finished the work off with a nice piece of work, uh, interception of the ball. And um, finished it off with a goal. Tony McGinnis, two goals, starting to come into the game. Port Adelaide have made a change on the bench. Baker's come off the ground and Crowden's gone on. Back to the centre, it'll be Kernahan. Takes it out of the air all the time in the world. Nice little gift to McDermott. Goes short, the pocket area. Smith and Copping. Smith first to it. Quick little gift to Stephen Curtis. Port Adelaide looking out of trouble here towards Geneva. Oh, he took his eye off it. He should recover. He wiped, kicked his desperation. Out the side, Geneva again. Heavy clash with McGuinness. Alan Stringer to McDermott. Doesn't have a look, but fires away. Copping almost made front spot. Chase on can Walsh get there. He can't. It's still in play. McGuinness comes in, and finally Port will get out of trouble. Brent Nowen's the kick. Here's Simons, though, with a chance to pick it up. Plenty of pressure there. He hooks it out to Marshall. Left footer. Lines it up. It's going to go through. What a goal. Glenelg right back in it with two quick goals. Seven goals, eight. Behind Port's 9-10. Well, David Marshall's a, a great two-sided player. Caught on the run side of his body then. He went on with it with a left foot kick. And it was a real opportunist goal, that one. Tony Simons was the original man about the game possession, was uh, well tackled by Greg Anderson. Then a little tap on to David Marshall, and David, as I said, uh, unerringly split the centre with a left foot, drop punt goal. Beautiful piece of work by David, who has lowered his colours at this point in time to Craig Bradley. Well, they'll bet three goals this quarter into the slight breeze here at the Bay as Lawson gives it to Johnston, and Johnston will boom Port into attack to be Gibbs getting back on it over his head. Simpson, that was coming through. Doofy finally for Glenelg. What a booming screw punt. Kernahan's got trouble with the sun. Yes. Comes from the front. Kidney picks it up. Quick little gift. Away goes McDermott through the centre of the ground up towards the full forward area. Carey's in front spot. He's got it. No, he has a chance from McGuinness. Taps it in front of him. Curtis from behind. Nice little turn on his left foot. Has a little stab. Oh, it's just touched on the line. Well, Glenelg, 7-9. Port. 9-10. What a remarkable uh, <laughs> turn of events. But now all of a sudden doing all the, all the attacking, all the attacking, and uh, Tony McGuinness almost got his third goal for the quarter. Almost 17 minutes into the quarter. Tap out was beautiful to Kernahan. On to McDermott. McDermott has a go. Wasn't ever going to go through, sadly. McGuinness certainly not giving up on the last line. And another point to the bay. Seven goals, ten now. I really thought Chrissy might have nailed that one then, Chris McDermott. He had everything going for him. No pressure. The ball was free, and he ran free of the pack, but uh, just kicked a little, little to the left-hand side of the goals. Stephen Curtis, really a figure with that headgear, comes grandstand side. Kernahan punches away. Kidney, oh, sandwiched between two poor players, Anderson and Bradley. By George is willing on those packs. Very willing. So a ball up. Well, now we're starting to get a hold of the, uh, the falling ball now. A lot better than what they have been doing. Big tap there was Henwood. Belts it into it for McDermott, and Curtis is there. No, he couldn't pick it up. McGuinness has a go. He can't do it either. Down goes the pack. The umpire will have to bounce. Benelga shifted from a 26-point deficit, and they brought it back to just 12 points. All happened in the last seven or eight minutes. Glenelg still on attack. The ball up on their half-forward line. Johnston and Carey. Ham with another big smash. He punches this ball a long, long way. A chance for Copping. He picks up. Goes short. Now, Stringer, surely that's not 10 metres. Stringer's kicks high, it'll bring rain. Hemwood again smashes away. Well, he can punch the ball a long way. 
Well, gee, he really throws himself into the fray too, Wayne Hamlet. He's, uh, he's made a difference. His physical presence of the centre-half forward this quarter has um, just brought about a turn of, well, a change of luck for the Glenelg plot side. Carey against Johnston. Carey drags it down. Johnston is the one who tries to flick it away with some success. Lawson couldn't grab it. Kidney with the ball now. Gee, beautiful balance from Kidney. Brought down by Lawson is the umpire. Henwood again in there. Johnston handballs away. Piachi will clear it. And now Brett Owens, the halfback player, gets a chance. Whoa, mistake. Still manages to hang on to the ball and runs it through the centre for Port Adelaide. Not far, though. Ebert goes down with the ball. Port Adelaide into attack for the first time in quite a few minutes. Yeah, at least 10, I'd say. Hasn't crossed their centre line for 10 minutes. I wouldn't have thought. Properly, I mean, you know, really getting into the teeth of attack. So a bounce up on the edge of the square. And he plays around it. Kernahan went for the tap. Fiachi bundled his way out. He got his kick away too, right towards the full forward area. Ross Gibbs back there, should be first to it. Harrison's got it. just going to call it has to be holding the man he must have thrown it away and that is the rule actually keith yes if you uh if you uh virtually well he didn't bounce it he sort of threw it away i had a feeling he didn't ever grab it though i didn't think well, he actually caught possession but i think he did momentarily and possibly pushed it away with his double with, with a double-handed take and it's probably similar to taking possession i don't know phil harrison will line up for his fourth kick in the game He's already got one this quarter and he kicked one in the first. It's a vital goal for Port, this I tell you. He's missed it, plenty of it behind it. He's offline. You can hear that the base court is like that. They weren't happy with the decision. So Port Adelaide are ticking away on the minor behinds. Nine goals, 11. Glenelg, 7 10. And on the replay, uh, it did look as if Gibbs might just have had that possession you talked about, Ryan. <laughs> pretty tough one for the umpire to make a decision in front of goal. Especially but it... when, when the player's back was to him. Chris Duthie, a boomer of a kick again, kicking out magnificently today. Vanell player held over the shoulder. Rob Kidney. Kidney, who's thrown himself in all the way. He's got into the game in the second quarter. Sure. In fact, he's had six kicks now. He was looking for Henwood. Here's a chance for Stringer, though. Brent Owens, well done to Smith, but Smith couldn't grab hold of it, so Stringer has another go. Gets it out to McDermott. He can't pick it up. Down goes the pack. The umpire must bounce. Craig Bradley's dropped out of the game this quarter. It hasn't had any prominence whatsoever can, compared to his 10th kick first quarter, and my statistician just tells me he's a, a kickless quarter so far. 13 points the difference. Port Adelaide's favour. The umpire's picked the game. The shot out the way of Stephen Kernahan it's going. Yes, and he's well within range, I'd say. No worries for the distance. It'll be his fifth kick in the game. No worries for the distance. It's a matter of accuracy from there for Stephen. If anything, the breeze would be from his right to left if you could say there's a breeze but it's a magnificent day for football here's his kick he's dragged it sport away by ben harris chance for mcginnis is it two three taps handballs widely smith oh he missed ben harris it's hit the post and finally run over the boundary line in fact over the point line for a minor behind what can we say that's that's Bernard's first poster <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> didn't really count tony mcginnis thought it was worth the try somebody might be in the square and yeah, here's tony, a just handball it feels like a handball again big kick out from baker Craig Ebert with the ball. Moved on to Anderson. Anderson's kick over half forward. There's a mark by Ebert. Oh, he just going back to the end of the marking power in the Port Adelaide forward line. Very little. It seemed no doubt to me because he had the back end of the pack. He juggled it. Yep. And it was dislodged as he was falling down under pressure from the other bodies. Only his third kick in this game. Yeah, he had very little say in the game, Russell Ebert. But this could be a fairly decisive kick. And he doesn't miss it. Port Adelaide put their tenth goal on the board and go three goals clear of Glenelg. That's Russell Ebert's first goal for the game. And um, certainly, he's had a hard time down there. He's uh, he's undermanned for height. Chris Duthie can certainly jump all over him all day if he wishes. And uh, I made the point a couple of seconds ago that Port Adelaide lack marking power on their forward line. They've got nobody up there to take a grab. Nobody. Graham Russell hasn't really uh, dominated the airwaves, and the other blokes are all little fellows. <laughs> it's the smallest forward I've ever seen. Captain Peter Kerry back into ruck against Johnson. Johnson got the tap. Bradley against Marshall. Dermot falls to ground. Finally comes out the side door. Chance for Seabone. He's collared by Craig Ebert. Picked up by Williams. McGuinness behind him. St and Williams still on his nose over the ball, and he wins the free kick in the back. 
a bit unlucky, Tony McGuinness. And I thought he, he, he did a lot, a lot of hard work to get to um, Stephen Williams. Williams plays it on quickly to Gill, coming down from the half back line. Looking for Dwayne Russell, who got hands to it. Now he's on the bottom of the pack with the ball. The umpire will bounce in the forward pocket for Port Adelaide. They're 18 points up. We're about 23 minutes into the quarter. Kerry looks up against Dwayne Russell. Dwayne Russell comes out and hooks one over his shoulder. It's not a bad hook, but he's uh, way offline and out of bounds on the ball. No percentage in that whatsoever. He got it and just tried to hook it over his head. It'll be Wayne Stringer to bring the ball back in for Glenelg when we get it out of the crowd. Little boy attempting to kick it over the fence down there and he's having all sorts of troubles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Finally, it's thrown over. Usually the ball would get salvaged by someone in the crowd in a case like that. Here with the kick in from the back pocket. Out of side, big Henwood. play, Wayne Henwood. And he's starting to have an influence on the game now with big punching and long kicking. This one over the centre. Copping put the shove in from the outside saw. <laughs> the Glenelg crowd don't like any free kick made against the uh, Glenelg boys, do they? <laughs> Darren Smith. Puts it up for the freeze. They'll have to fight for this one. Seabone punched away. There was no opposition finally in the end towards Hemwood and Anderson. McDermott tapped it on. Still with it, McDermott. He goes to ground. Anderson opportunity. And uh, run the free kick on. VR Chica So McDermott will move it on quickly for Gunnell. See if they can get back into attack. They've had the initiative for most of the quarter. Johnston on to Geneva. His kick goes nowhere. Stringer will try to pluck it out of the oh, air. Take goes possession. Nowhere. Either McGuinness tries to punch. Doesn't come off. Stephen Williams has got it for Port Adelaide and time to bounce it a couple of times. I don't know why Tony McGuinness didn't take possession there. Here's a chance for Gunnell to mob up. Finding the C-bone. He'll get the little give on. The reason Gunnell did that is because Russell Evans went to a pocket area a while ago and Geneva went straight down the ground. The back of the play, Tony Hall will go short. To Marshall. Marshall will have a look up front. He booms it right towards the edge of the square. Fly up Stephen Kernahan. Here's another opportunity if he can pick it up. He can't. He's well tackled. Stephen Kernahan at the bottom of the pack. With Kernahan. Kernahan. I thought Stephen could have been tripped then. Stephen Kernahan. We'll see a ball up on the edge of the square. Stephen Kernahan's declared war on Stephen Kernahan. I thought he might have uh, infringed a little, but I didn't see it that way. A pressure bounce now. Kernahan grabs it. The cook bounce. Have even got out of the full but just inside. So the throw in in the forward pocket for Gunnell. Yeah, three goals down, and we're into time on in the second quarter. Picked up by Craig Ebert. Moved on by Stephen Williams, but only a few metres. There's yeah, Stephen Williams handball to nobody. Ran over the boundary line. Into time on in the second quarter. The throw in directly underneath the scoreboard. It reads Glenelg 7 11, Port 10 11. There's only Three been six goals, goals the scored. difference. Only been six goals scored in the quarter, too, Rick. Wild play. kick out, Bradley. He's got front position. Marshall saying, I've got nowhere near you, Bradley. McDermott, ball up. Uh, David Marshall fought back well this quarter against Craig Bradley. And uh, has more than held his well. He's, he's won this quarter. It's time to bounce in the centre half back position for Glenelg. To get out of trouble. Bradley, though. Forces it forward to the outer wing. Played on by Russell, looking for Harrison. Harrison gets into the back of Sebo. And the free kick is paid to Grinnell. John Sebo. Sebo goes towards McDermott. Wayne Stringer. He's under all sorts of trouble. He gets his kick away, however, towards the edge of the square. Alan Stringer was a nice big handwood from behind. It's in half forward this quarter. Oh, he's handballed towards Marshall, but it was well intercepted. Owens. Brett Owens kick to the wing. Only to find McDermott again. Tony oh, it's Hall. Tony Hall this time. Yep. Tony Hall working it down towards the half forward flank grandstand side. Take almost on by Marshall. Allen Stringer with the ball. Lovely little chip to Kidney. Kidney can turn around. No, Curtis is too quick. Mm, but he's a mile away from him, Stephen Curtis. He's trying to read the play there and left Robin Kidney unattended 30 yards away. So 30 seven, metres away. Seventh <laughs> kick coming up for Robin Kidney. He hooks it across the goal. Port Adelaide defenders can tend to punch it away for a point. But Elk 7 17, they can't be right. 7 goals 12 is better That's against correct. Port's 10 11. Ben Harris straight down the centre of the ground, almost to the centre. Circle, massive kick out by Ben Harris. Bradley couldn't pull it down. Here's an opportunity oh, now for strength. the Bays. Carey McDermott was the player giving the handball. Copping. 
taken away from Smith on that occasion. He's giving away height, Stephen Copping, but he's a strong mark. I think he's lacking a bit of confidence shooting for goal, Stephen. He wanted to pass that on then. He's got to have a shot from there. His fifth kick. Shouldn't have any problems with the distance. He's going to go short the lead on Alan Stringer. He's got a pat it there. Well, it's painfully obvious to me, Stephen did not want to shoot for goal that particular time, and uh, it, it, it obviously didn't occur to the Port Adelaide lads that uh, he'd go for the short pass, but sitting up here in the grandstand, it looked obvious to be on, and uh, Alan Stringer materialised virtually out of the ground to give him something to kick to. Alan Stringer picked up a goal early in the first quarter. Yes. And now he'll line up to get Glenel closer to Port Adelaide as they go in for the half-time break, and that's what he's done. Glenel 8-12 now, Port 10-11. Well, as I said, uh, Stephen Copping is lacking a little bit of confidence today shooting for goal. Um, he hasn't kicked one as yet. And that particular time, he, uh, Peter Carey found him with a, a quick chip shot, which I call him, and only go about 30 yards. And Stephen, from then on, wanted to pass the ball off. And he was able to find Alan Stringer after a little bit of indecision. Alan popped out of the ground, took the mark, and kicked the goal. Back in the centre, it'll be Peter Carey. Something to the grandfather of the Glenelg side and captain against Johnston. Gavin Walsh has put it up high. BRG getting back on it. Oh, he was a bit slow getting to it. Alan Stringer, nice little handball to McGuinness. He's away. His handball goes out wide. Opportunity for Bays. Where will this kick go? Right hand. towards the square. Popping, setting himself in the middle. Kidney looking for the crumbs. He's got it now. Makes room. Picks it up the second time. Gives it there. Penguin has put it through, I'd have to say. Umpire says, yes, he has. So, Wayne Hamlin has got his first goal on the board. Uh, Glenelg making a revival late in this quarter. They're now nine goals, 12. Port, 10, 11. They're only five points down, Glenelg now. It's been a big turnabout in play. They've dominated this quarter. Uh, they've definitely just restricted Craig Bradley during the, the event of the, the last 25 minutes or so. And Wayne Hemmer's had an effect with strength, particularly at centre-half forward. And uh, the whole side is lifted as one in the forward line, particularly. Port Adelaide... Uh... 26 points up at one stage in the quarter. Now Glenelg have got them back to just five points. Five minutes into the second quarter and time must run out as it hasn't been a big goal scoring quarter. Can one of the sides get a break before they go in for half time? Carey. All down into the pack again. It's cleared by Glenelg. Not far though. Brent Nowen stopped it. Picked up by Fiacci. Comes back in. Looking for Jennifer. Couldn't find him. Carey on to McGuinness who has a wild kick down towards the half forward flank pick up by Smith his handball's a long one to Owens Sounds with the ball now in towards Johnston Johnston has the chance to settle down and took a big kick in oh there's a little bit of luck off the back there's a Charlie on the Williams and there it is Port Adelaide just a kick away as we go in towards half time there's the siren Port Adelaide 11 goals 11 on Glenelg's 9-12 What a fortuitous goal that was. Stephen Ooh. Williams has missed three this quarter and four for the game. Picked up the loose ball and popped it through. Just to drag away from Glenelg again. Right on the line, right on the siren. And Garden's rucking. Fair problems with the flat ball. Probably 14 points in it, isn't it? No, 11 points. Start of the third quarter down here at the bay. Port Adelaide by 11 points. A couple of changes at the Glenelg side. Peter Carey hasn't come back onto the ground. Neither has Stephen Barrett. We've got Garton and Hewitt on. Owens puts Port Adelaide into attack, looking for Rush Lee, but he's at full forward. Playing 433 games today, an Australian league record. Stephen Williams is tackled by Ross Gibson. The umpire says that's holding on. Well, I think it was there, I've got to be honest. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ross Gibson, I think, is... Um arguing the toss on that one but uh, I, I feel that Stephen Williams hadn't taken possession of the ball and Russ grabbed him and got to pay the penalty Stephen Williams his ninth kick looking for his third goal umpire having a good close look the cheers are there and Stephen Williams has got third and a good start to court they're 12-11 Glenelg nine goals 12 well that's the one thing Glenelg couldn't afford I felt an early goal to Port Adelaide they did a remarkable job in the second quarter, Adelaide. Uh, sorry, um, Glenelg, when they were 27 points down at one stage of the quarter. They fought back to actually all but hit the front. But now the uh, Port Adelaide lads have dragged 16, uh, 17 points clear again. Back in the centre, it'll be Garten to go up against Johnston. Baker, Johnston got the tap. 
towards Alan Stringer. He couldn't do much with it. Chance for Port Adelaide, this wing side. He goes to ground, Gill, but he wins himself the free kick. Too high, the umpire says. So Gill plays on quickly under the wing. Bradley making himself available. Quite loose there. Could be 15 metres. No, the umpire says it's all right. Yes, it is 15 metres. Oh. Stringer. I love the way they push each other away when they're going back on the Bradley's market. on the move now. He's decided to get away from that sort of action and push it in towards centre-half forward. Looking for Ebert, coming across the front of the pack, couldn't take it. Johnston's got the ball, now it's Ebert again. Stephen Williams, over the ball, gets against him, that's got to be holding the ball this time, and Gibbs is yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> Ross Gibbs getting the worst end of the slot, I think Stephen Williams runs over the mark, 15 metres. To Ross Griffiths. Yes, he'll kick this a company mile, you'll find. No, he's gone short. He's going to pick out Adam Garten. Mark should be paid, it will be. Garten onto the ground in this third quarter, replacing Peter Carey, who we didn't see come back out onto the field following the half-time break. Copping may have got a push in the back, it wasn't seen. Smith couldn't do much with it. And the umpire will bounce up on the half-forward line for the Bays. There was a slight push there, no question about that. Craig Ebert running in for Port Adelaide. Ball thrown up this time, a yes. high jump from Russell Johnston, didn't go anywhere. Then Harris at the back will mop up after that point. A snapshot by Stephen Curtahead who grabbed the throw in. Quinnell 9 13, 4 12 11. Ben Harris. Front spot, Russell Johnston, is it? It is. Yes, in front of Garten on that occasion. One of the few overhead marks taken by the Port Adelaide team today. Fifth kick for Russell Johnston. Covers a good 45 metres looking for uh, Dwayne Russell, but Marshall read it the best. Oh. And that'll be 15, will it? Well, just a bit tough roll over by Dwayne, Dwayne just gave him a little gentle push, but uh, David helped himself along. Marshall's on the move, takes a bounce. Kicks it right in towards the full forward position. Stephen Kernahan there, but a huge pack for Kernahan out the back, gets a kick away, touch, says the umpire. Another point to Benelg at 9-14 now. Port Adelaide at 12-1. What a highly skilled player David Marshall is. That was a magnificent left foot kick into the square. Alan Gill going short, Russell Johnston. Found himself some space, got away from Adam Garten on that occasion. He should drive Port Adelaide towards centre wing on the outer side. Dwayne Russell and Seabone, whistle's gone. See the whistle's going a lot this quarter. I didn't see the infringement, but Seabone's won it. Towards centre half forward, it was picked out Tony Simons. Lovely kick by Seabone. Simon's making space for himself. He wants him to go long. He'll have a shot. Drop punt is long all right. It'll go right towards the square. Stephen Kernahan comes out. Smith in front. So the pressure Smith with a fine mark. His fifth kick goes out wide. Greg Anderson. Haven't seen a lot of Greg Anderson. He's covered territory though. Left foot kick towards centre wing. There's nobody there. It's all gone elg at this point of time. Hewitt with the ball. Turns it around. Check choice of several jumpers there. Seabone bangs one in towards the half forward line. Stephen Kernahan turns around, gets one high. But the other guy says holding it to him. Missed the first one and saw the second tackle, obviously. No chance for Kernahan to get rid of the ball. And so a bounce on the half forward line for Gunnell. Umpire bounces this time. Kernahan got the tap. He's still got it with him. We'll try and break three. He does. A little left foot snap towards Stephen Copping. We'll try and make space. His handball was. Uh, well smothered by Darren Smith and it's over the line so we'll see a ball in in that right forward pocket area for the Bays they're 9-14, Port 12-11 Johnston against Kernahan. Kernahan taps it over the back can't find a Glenelg jumper though the ball neutralised and another bounce Port well, Adelaide are lined up as they finish the second quarter so no dramatic change has been made by the black and whites is having a lot of bounce in practice here today. It's been stop startish. Tim Ginova now an opportunity to get the ball moving. Greg Anderson drives him towards centre wing. Harrison got up very early, couldn't pull down the big specky. Bradley hooks it around the corner. He's found a Glenelg play who gets on towards Marshall. Marshall kicks it in towards centre half forward. The ball goes wide though, and Greg Anderson drops back to pick up a mark on the half back line for Port Adelaide. They're playing end to end over there. Seventh kick. In towards the centre this time. Oh, oh Russell drops the one he should have taken. Geneva swoops on it, gets it up quickly. Craig Ebert. Moving it in, looking for brother Russell Ebert. Couldn't quite handle it. Ebert, clever play. Taps it on, but it's kicked away by Glenelg. And they come into attack. Big chance for Glenelg here. It looks to be McDermott. It is. He'll give it across to Alan String and the running player, David Kernahan. Now he'll have a good look. If he does, he does. He booms one to one.
That's the second time David Kernan kicked a long goal from his side of the ground. He's playing on a wing on George Fiacci. He ran clear of his opponent then, accepted the hand pass from Alan Stringer. That's his ninth kick for the game, his second goal, and he's had a big effect in Glenelg's game uh, today from his side of the ground. That was a top goal. And uh, he's just got too much height. Not that the height had anything to do with that goal then, but he's got too much height for George Fiacci. Gartland and Johnston. Johnston won that tap. Went past McDermott. Wayne Russell uses his strength and booms one up towards the forward line. Russell Evans at the back of the pack. Fly by Crowden. Russell's trying to claim the mark. Russell Evans, that was. Jennifer's little kick smothered off hands towards Ross Gibbs. He'll go down on ground with Crowden. Gibbs trying to barrel his way out of trouble. Harrison's claiming, holding the ball, and eventually we'll see it thrown in underneath the scoreboard. Port in attack. Although Ross Gibbs almost scooped that out of bounds then. Adam Garton comes in for Glenelg. Frank Seabone with him. Geneva picks it up and has a look, and it rolls across the front of goals. One point only. Port Adelaide. Now 12-12, Glenelg at 10-14. The amazing thing now is Adam Garton's running down to do all the ruck work and uh, Russell Johnson's hanging around the centre of the ground. A la Peter Carey the first quarter. Duthie comes grandstand side. David Kernahan was there also. Alan Stringer with the back heel. Bradley the running player. He casually gives it to Craig Bradley and away he goes. Towards the pocket area. They'll set themselves. Looks to be little Jennifer. He's bundled out the way, however, by Ross Gibbs. Gibbs okay. plays it to the outer side. Looking for Simons. Good kick and a great mark. Simons plays it on. Moves it on to Hewitt. Glenelg move it over their centre line. There's Marshall. Chest mark. Chance to play it in here for Copping. Just in front of him on the half volley. He can't pick it up. So Port Adelaide with a chance to recover. Brett Owens gives it to Lawson. Lawson will go out wider. It'll be Dwayne Russell with maybe. Long kick. Scrubber. Ross Gibbs again. He's got time. Turns. Fires it back whence it came. It's all Glenelg jumpers here. Russell Johnson's uh, forced to come in late. Marshall, the easy mark, plays it on towards Stephen Copping. He's got McGuinness if he wants. He's going to be quick. Bradley's on him. He's got his kick away. However, it's long and it's high. And it's not a bad sort of kick indeed, but just the wrong side of the goalpost. And Glenelg have got 10 goals, 15. Port, 12-12. Ross Gibbs coming into the game out of the back pocket for Glenelg now. Big kick in from Harris. Fly from Anderson doesn't pay off. Tony Simons off the back of the pack in towards centre half forward. McGuinness over the top, but no, it's another Bay player in front of him. It's Marshall again. Three quick marks in a row from David Marshall. His tenth kick coming up. He's a long way out. Just a little bit of breeze behind him. David Marshall's three marks for the game coming just in almost the same number of minutes. After a very quiet start, he's uh, more than matched Craig Bradley over the last uh, quarter and a half. Marshall lines up to give Glenelg a chance to close the gap. It's long but wide. Vigorous contest there. Stephen Kernahan turns it around. Chance for Alan Stringer to rise for it. Pushed out. Once again, Stephen Kernahan and Stephen Copping flew for that mark. And, uh, it's not working out. The duo on the fourth final line of attack for Glenelg. I see Peter Kerry's getting ready to come on the ground also. Obviously, Glenelg will change their rucks from the bench this quarter. It'll be good news for the Bays. I'll be happy to see Peter making an appearance. Garten, the flyer, who replaced Peter Kerry this quarter. Smith, Wild Hamble, Tony, uh, Alan Springer, I should say. Wayne, I should say, towards Marshall. He'll tap it on Clemmie McDermott. Gives it back to Stringer. Stringer's off the side of the boot kick. Will fly to the pocket area. Stephen Kernahan, a big fly, almost the second grab, not paid. McGuinness is shoved out of the way. Brett Owens. He goes take the kick. Gavin Walsh, the big opportunity here. It'll be his ninth kick for the game. Yes, he's running right today with Chris McDermott. There's the change. Peter Carey's on the ground. Gavin Walsh's kick being clapped by McGuinness in the square and signaled a goal by the umpire. So Glenelg are getting close to the port. 11-15, port 12-12. Yes, nothing in the game now. Three points to be precise. Gavin Wells finished off some good tackling work there. He, uh, he, he really brought Brett Nowers to the ground strongly, and the umpire judged that was holding the ball. And, uh, not many people would argue that one. He had a chance to get rid of it, did not. And Gavin Walsh, who fancies himself uh, as a goal kicker, finished the work off with a, uh, a neat goal. The 
two first ruckmen back in action in the centre. Peter Carey on the ground now against Russell Johnston for Port Adelaide. Carey wins it. Marshall taps it to Kidney. Kidney doesn't go with it, though. Carey reaches down to try for it. Recovery from Port Adelaide, though, now as John Simpson, the centre-half back, booms one in towards centre-half forward for them. Gibbs couldn't grab it. Here's pressure. Jennifer dives over the ball. Ball and big pack there. Russell Eagle tried to manufacture a free kick out of that little tussle for the ball. He threw himself forward to the play, but the umpire wasn't having any of it at all. Three points of difference. Port Adelaide in front of Glenelg. Terrible bounce by the umpire. Taken out of the air by Groudon. Players will come to ground. Dwayne Russell, Jennifer tried to get uh, free with it. That kick smothered off the boot. Massive plays in the square area. Opportunity now for Jennifer. He's picked it up. He's grabbed over the shoulder. He'll get the kick. And the next is made the next. Well, his kick was offline for a point, but uh, the tackle from behind was uh, offensive. So the little fella will take a shot from goal no more than 10 metres out. He's already kicked two so far. It'll be his 12th kick. His first two goals came in the first quarter. David Grantsburg been placed again by uh, Baker. Geneva's kick. Couldn't miss it, and he has it. So Port edge away again. They're 13-12. That's Tim Ginnivers' third goal for the game, playing a very tigerish uh, role around the packs. Uh, he's an opportunist, and uh, as I've said many times when I've been coaching, free kicks in front of goal can make or break you. At this stage, it's cost an old dearly. It was around the neck, no question, and Tim Ginnivers, lively player today, finished it off with a neat goal. Again, Johnston. Now it's Baker who's moved into the first ruck now for Port Adelaide, and he wins that one. Got it down to Stephen Williams, he couldn't handle it. So Robin Kidney picks it up for the base. Scoots out a wild one, Phil Harrison turns. Harris has gone to a wing, incidentally. Stephen Williams again in front, big carry though with the height, takes it out of the air. It's tapped on for Gunnell, Gallant Stringer goes in with the body. Gavin oh. Walsh. Walsh, oh, and there it is. Smith came straight to Kernahan. Kernahan held his ground against Harris. Stephen Kernahan lines up. Oh. And after a quiet first half, now we're seeing Stephen Kernahan working. This is his ninth kick, and it's a goal. His first, then he'll go to 12-15. Port Adelaide, 13-12. Uh, now there's the difference. The Nog have Martin Power in their forward line. It hasn't shown out all that much today, but it's there. Stephen Kernahan was able to uh, elongate his arms for that kick by Gavin Walsh and make something out of nothing virtually. It was just a wild kick towards goal. But having the big fellow on the square gives you a chance. Ford have got little people everywhere in their forward line. Back to a margin of three points. Port Adelaide's favour. Baker got the tap, streaking through Gavin Walsh again. He just set up that last goal and he booms it up towards the full forward area. Kerner hands it behind. Darren Smith in front. Mark paid to Smith. Smith plays on quickly to the outer side. Looking for Geneva. Oh, oh gee. It's taken out. Now that's a... Uh, he's hurt. Yes, that's unfortunate because Geneva uh, committed himself for the mark, missed it completely. And I thought that the player coming through, in fact, was still certainly going for the ball or he going was, in the play. Oh, yes. There was nothing uh, wrong with the attack, but... He uh, couldn't criticise Rob Kidney. He had his eyes on the ball, but uh, Tim Geneva's unlucky. Gill takes the free kick for him, goes towards the outer side. The whistle's gone. I would have played the mark as well. But no, Dwayne Russell's going to come out with the ball. It must have been an infringement in that pack. Wayne Russell will find oh. the back post. No, Wayne is a beautiful smothered opportunity now for Wayne Hemwood. Gives it across to McGinnis. He's on that left foot. We'll go right towards the square. Gonna hand Sheffield. Well, it's home by McGinnis. And Glenelg has hit the front. 13 goals, 15. Port 13, 12. Well, that was vintage Tony McGinnis. He ran down the field, attempted the hand pass, and kicked a lovely 50 metre goal. He just cleared the hands, but it was, as I said, vintage Tony McGinnis. It's a glorious kick of the ball. It cleared uh, Stephen Kernahan and uh, Ben Harris in the square. And they'll get the front for the first time for, well, I don't know when. Probably the first time, full stop. <laughs> Early in the game, anyhow. Grinnell three points up. About halfway through the third quarter. Baker drags it out of the air and kicks one high. Looking for Russell. It's in a half forty. Head front position. Couldn't take it. Kick on then from Lawson. Gibbs with the chance now to pick up for the base. Keeps it in front of him well. Works it all. Try for the hand pass to Duthie, but it didn't come off. Out of bounds. Throw in the right forward pocket area. Port Adelaide in attack. They're trailing by three points. They've led most of the day here at the bay. 
Carey from behind, takes it out of the air, he gets his kick away, it's vacant territory, the chase is on, Hamwood Walsh first there from the front end. He's urged on, he kicks it with his left foot. Great right foot. Copping, he's got one spot and he's taken the mark. Well, Alan Stringer was running past, but Copping will blast now. Kernahan's on the lead, that's where it's going. He's taken it over. Almost a dead heat with Curtis to pay the mark for Stephen Kernahan. You can sense some achievement getting into this base side. It's the third mark for Stephen Kernahan today. He's been a bit quiet, it'll be his 10th kick and it'll be 15 metres as well. Unfortunate for Stephen Curtis because it was very close, wasn't it? Kernahan had to come into that pack very late. And Curtis thought he'd marked it, but it seemed a fair call from the umpire and uh, you don't give away 15 metres when you're this close. No, that, that's undisciplined, really. What's more, the angle is so much better too, Keith. He was on about a 45 degree angle. I'd say he's now almost directly in front. Stephen Kernahan. Oh, he's missed it. A shocking error. He's offline through for a minus score. So Glenelga 13 16, Port 13 12. Remarkable miss that because you would back Stephen Kernan in nine times out of ten from that position. In fact, most guys around town, you probably backed him in from that position. And uh, he's missed it. So Port Adelaide breathe again in this third quarter as Ben Harris booms one out to the grandstand side. Alan String has got it. He plays it on. David Kernan with a chance now onto the right. 16, Port Adelaide, 13-12. Well, how's he going, eh? David Kernahan, his third goal for the game. A magnificent piece of work by the lad. Down the 18. Got a lot going for him. A magnificent kick of the ball. I said earlier, I think George Fiatcher needs to be shifted from him. He's just not handling him at all well. And now Stephen Knight comes on the ground. But uh, not, not going to air, uh, to the wing. He's just coming on the ground to probably play half forward. Yes, he is. So, David Kernan, his third goal for the game. Running away from Port Adelaide now. Well, no. Baker tried to take it out of the air. Bradley socks it off the ground. Chase will be on Tony Hall if it sits will be first there. He does. He's got time. Gives it to Seabone. Looking for backup support. We'll come across towards the centre of the ground. Wayne Stringer. David Kernan. Hall. Marshall. Henwood. Henwood has a shot. Wild shot off the side of the boot towards the pocket area. It's still in play, however. Kernahan goes down, holding the ball, and it's out of bounds. Well, the Kernahan's certainly coming into the game. David Kernahan kicked the last goal, and Stephen Kernahan was just tackled uh, in, the, in the last line of attack. Big kick from Ben Harris in towards the centre. Back fly from Phil Harrison doesn't come off. Simons with the ball for Glenelg. Right into the full forward position. Copping's there. Stephen Kernahan is too. Copping with a chance. Now McGuinness over the ball. Still in play, Copping. They're going backwards to get a look at the goals. Whoa, that was a high handball. Hewitt taps it back in. Kidney flies. Couldn't Something make it over there. Bit of action over the side. Down yeah, high moves in, and so do a couple of other players. And it's on again. I think Christopher Dermott's in that somewhere along the line. The umpire says 15 metres. Well, there's two very important 15 metres going the way of the bays in the last three or four minutes. Looks Stephen like McGuinness will be the kick. Will it? Stephen Can't see him through the pack at this stage, but I have a feeling it's Tony McGuinness lining up. Yes, it is. Phil well, Harrison have a little word with him on the side. I think it might have been a crash between Harrison and McGuinness that started it all. It's on his left leg too, but he should score from there. Well, He's done it. Glenel going away with it now. They've come from 26 points down halfway through the second quarter. Now they clear out. Yeah, nine points up. Well, it's a bit of a melee, points up. bit of a melee over on the far side, and uh, out of that was a free kick paid to um, Glenelg, and then a 15-metre penalty applied for another skirmish, which uh, I didn't quite pick up how it eventuated. But out of it all, Tony McGuinness has kicked his fourth goal. And as I said before, Glenelg is starting to run away from fourth. They've been a bit of a stopper on this, and they wish to uh, remain in this game. And once again, their biggest problem has been no marking power and attack. When it does go forward, they've got no one to take a mark and kick a goal. Back in the centre, Peter Carey will do opposition against Baker. Baker at the height, Bradley forced off the ball. McDermott gets a hurried kick away. Wayne Hebert went for one of those big smashes. Here goes McGuinness again, he's into the game. Lux River bounces on his wrong foot, but he smashed it away towards the square. Kernahan in front. Opportunity now for Copping. Can he pick it up? Smith, nice back. back. And now Pye will pay it in the back. Well, You've got to commit yourself, I suppose, but yep. uh, Copping got rid of the ball just at the right opportunity. 
He's won himself the free kick. It'll be his seventh. The angle very acute. A bit unlucky, Darren Smith. Still, that's the game, isn't it? And copping, no doubt about it. Nose over the ball, and yep. very difficult for Smith to tackle him without giving it away. Six goals to two so far this quarter. Glenelg in front. Graham, you said uh, Stephen hasn't got confidence shooting for goal, but he's slotted that one from a very acute angle. His first. Glenelg a 16 goal, 16 court, uh, 13 12. Well, I mean, the confidence always returns when your side hits the front. I mean, it's early in the piece when uh, Stephen was finding it hard to find the big sticks. He was sort of uh, not totally, I suppose, sure he would kick the goal for the marks he was taking. But that time, from an acute angle, he's speared it right to the middle. So everything's come to him all of a sudden. And there it is, Stephen Copping picking up the falling ball and being tackled over the uh, shoulder by Darren Harris. It was Darren Smith, it was there. Baker got the tap towards Bradley, Stephen Williams. Port Adelaide finally into attack, they've got it to their half forward line. Chase is on, out there Fiachi. It's collared by two, uh, three Bay players and finally Duthie with the ball. No, he took his too long to get rid of it. Simons, left foot kick, over centre wing towards Gavin Walsh. Players will stack up there. It's Brett no in support and the ball up. The switch has finally been made. Greg Anderson's now on David Kernahan. It's long overdue that move. George Fiatch has gone to a half forward flank. Only a couple of minutes to time on now. And Port Adelaide need to get a couple of quick goals to get back in. Ball comes in towards the centre for Anderson. It's stolen beautifully by David Kernahan. Again, he's having another shot. And he's got it. Yes, what a goal. Good old 17 goals, 16. Port 13 12. What a game David Conan has turned on this quarter particularly. He's had a good game for the whole three quarters, but more so, three goals from his wing has been soul destroying for Port Adelaide. And uh, there's no stopping the lad at the moment. He just came down the field, pick up uh, a kick in from defence, lined them up, put it through again. He's got a straight boot on his on his feet today, old David, young David Kernahan. Change in ruck, it'll be Stephen Kernahan for the Bays. We're almost approaching time on of the third quarter, and the third quarter must go down to Glenelg. Craig Ebert, give it to Stephen Williams. Even he can't break three points. Adelaide having trouble finding space. Quick little gift to Simons. He'll go out wide. That will be Mark Hewitt, it is. He'll streak the Bays into attack again. Up towards the half ball position, coughing in front of Smith. Spalled off hands. Smith first to recover. Stephen Kernahan shrugs off the tackles the handball to the boundary line. Great tackle by Alan yes. Stringer. Alan Stringer way ahead of um, the action there. He knew what Stephen, Kernan, uh, Stephen Curtis was all about. He was trying to get through the pack, but he didn't quite get there. Throw in half forward flank for Glenelg. Henwood goes for the big punch this time, but Craig Ebert for Port Adelaide to recover. Comes out looking for Russell and finds him. Wayne Russell. His 12th kick in the game. Whoa! Gibbs at the back, can't quite handle it. Gibbs picks it up, the of the pack. Goes backwards to Marshall. Hewitt's in trouble. Great tackle by Russell. Plays it on. Got to win the Bay crowd's on about it. That's good football. McDermott. Tony Hall tried to get it away. Baker on the night. Just come on the ground in the last few minutes. Lovely shot in. And Ebert will get a goal. Second goal to Russell Ebert. Port Adelaide, 14, 12, Glenelg. 17, 16. Well, Stephen Knight has just come on the ground and has immediately had an effect on um, Port Adelaide's forward play. Nice piece of work. Um, it was arms and legs everywhere. Then the crowd were going mad because uh, Wayne Russell tackled very strongly, but uh, he was paid the benefit of the doubt. Might have been a little high, but Stephen Knight finished up with the ball, popped it over, and a quick hand pass to Russell Ebert at the square. What about his second goal in Port Adelaide's 14? Bays have made another change in ruck. Wayne Henwood uh, going up to that centre bounce. Stephen Kernahan's got the centre half forward, I think. Chance to be uh, for Jennifer. His handball was beautifully read by uh, the Bay player. But we'll see a ball up on the half forward line for Glenelg. Marshall, it was. George Fiatch is being replaced. Kernahan and Baker. David Grouton coming on. McDermott with the ball. Runs it round the half forward line. In towards the middle. Copping couldn't take it. Fly by Gill. Curtis will have to mop up. Ooh. Off the boot. It skidded along the ground. Right in the forward pocket to throw in. Bays in attack. That's where we've seen the most of this third quarter. They're in front. 17-16 to Port. 14-12 to throw in. Carey taps it out towards the back. 
Stephen Copping nose over the ball. Stringer fires it out for Stephen Kernahan. He'll line up the post. Can he be straight for this one? Umpire says that's good. Stephen Kernahan's got his second goal. They've all come in this quarter. And Glenel are now 18 goals, 16 to port, 14, 12. Yes, that was a great piece of work by Alan Stringer. He's had a, uh, a reasonable day today on the half court flank for Glenelg. He's always there, very alert, and uh, very excited by his hand pass at the Stephen Kernahan then because Stephen finished it off with his, uh, as we said, his second goal for the game in the 18th for Glenelg. Into time on in the third quarter and a fantastic nine goal burst by Glenelg this time, going with a slight breeze. Kidney kicks it away to the grandstand flank. David Kernahan again, he's been a force in this corner. Will he recover in time? Courageous stuff, gets the head over the ball. Alan Stringer with it now. Alan Stringer's kick is a bit wonky. Finds Copping, he brought it down too high. Another kick for goal for the base. Yeah, very untidy tackle by Brenton Owens. Wasn't on, too high. Nobody could argue that one. The eighth kick for Stephen Copping. Started quietly, got a couple of points on the board. Built up his confidence. This would be his second goal if he gets it in the quarter. He's got that one. The Bays go away. 19-16 to Port Sporting World. Stephen Coffey never looked like missing that goal. He's really, everything's come back to him in this quarter. From early in the piece, as I was saying, he was uh, not really shooting for goal with any confidence. Now he's got everything going for him. He's playing in front. He's getting late, the late tackle there by Brenton Owens. Uh, set up this... Relatively easy chance for Stephen to kick his second goal. And then I'll move on to 19 goals, 16 behind, 130 points. The Port, 14 goals, 12, 96. Be well into time on in the third quarter. Wayne Henwood to go up against Russell Johnston. Henwood, he's got a big smash on him, tapped on cleverly to Kidney. Will it sit for him? He goes to ground. He's still got possession. Trying to tap it out the side door towards McDermott. Finally picked up by Walsh. She gets a hurried kick up towards the forward area. Copping, the bounce favours him. He taps it clearly to Alan Stringer. I don't find him again. It's onto that left foot of his. He bangs it right. And there's another one. The little car going wild. 20 goals, 16, port 14, 12. That's Tony McGinnis' third goal for the quarter. And a total of five all told. And he's running right down there. He's really got Stephen Curtis on plus at the moment. He's running where the ball is. Picking up the, uh, the relatively, well, easy chances, you might call them. Well, that wasn't so easy because uh, Gavin Walsh kicked a very quick ball out of the, the scrimmage. Stephen Coppin knocked it across, picked up by Alan Stringer over the top of Tony. Tony McGuinness ran into an open goal and speared it through. Well, what a stunning quarter from Glenelg. Even better than their 10-goal burst in the Escort Cup last week. 11 goals in the quarter. The Port of Man is only three against Russell. And Glen Elgar dominate. Everything's running for the Bays at the moment. Seabrain played on towards Stringer. He'll drive it up towards the half forward line. Kernahan missed it. There he is again. Tony McGinnis. He'll have another shot. This could be two in two minutes. No, he's just off line and through for a minor score. So Glen Elgar 20 goals, 17. That's 37 scoring shots. Port 14, 12, 26 scoring shots. Right, and once again, Tony McGinnis was able to get away from Stephen Curtis. Kick out from Ben Harris. Long towards the centre, looking for Darren Smith. Marshall over the top, almost stole it from him. Bradley out in front now. Chased by Stephen Kernahan. He'll be lucky to catch Bradley. But he's staying with him, Stay with him. him. Plenty of pressure there as Bradley kicks it. And as a result, can't find anybody right there in the half-forward line position for Port Adelaide. Stephen Williams tried to grab it, couldn't do so. He hands it back to the umpire. Well, Port Adelaide need a goal. They haven't been down this end in attack. Very much at all. Baker taps it. There's no port attack there at all. And Glenelg will relieve towards the centre of the grounds. Stephen Kernahan. Simpson off hands. Why he goes. What can he do? Put a bit of life into the port attack. Booms one towards the square. Duthie's getting back. Oh, oh, the nice. late flyer. Sebo in the mark. No Tony Hall the mark. Courageous mark. Had the player coming at him. Tony Hall will play it to the outer side. Big fly from Russell, doesn't come off. Port Adelaide now with a chance to move forward through Geneva. Geneva's kick is high, looking for Baker. Can't find him. Geneva again. Another high one. And offline by the look of the umpire. Ooh. Ball dives at it. Can't do it. Five minutes into the into time on in the, the third quarter here at the Bay. And Port Adelaide, a half-hearted attempt at the goal. Can't get a good run at it. 
Baker and Ham with the flies, Seabone the tap, Russell Lee, but what can he do? He's on his left boot, snaps one high, wide, and all the result is a minor score, a point. 14-13, Port, Glenelg, 20-17. Russell Lee, playing out of the pocket now, with David Baker at full forward. They're, he's throwing his side around quite a bit, Stephen Knight on a flank, half forward flank, and uh, to no, no avail because uh, they're not doing it as they like at the moment. Glenelg to the grandstand side. Only to find Anderson. Fine mark over David Kernahan. We haven't seen much of Greg Anderson today, especially in this quarter. He puts it back in towards the square. There's the big mark. That's Baker. David Baker played most of his games in the reserves for Port Adelaide. He's 25 years old. This is his third kick. Played off the bench for part of the game today. up to give Port a chance into this oh, nice oh, quarter and that's yeah. the end of that tells the story Port Adelaide can't do a thing right this quarter 14 14 now well behind Glenelg on 2017 well I've been labouring the point they need marking power and attack but as soon as they get one uh, David Blake has mucked it up Chris Duthie comes grandstand side Wayne Hebel to the sea bone there with Russell Johnston play on the call Johnston's wild handball smothered oh, he went in very high top the side of Russell Johnston's head and he'll win himself the free kick Young Rob Kidney is like David and Goliath then, but he caught Russell a rather stunning blow, and uh, Russell's, Russell Johnson has got the free kick. Be his sixth kick. Goes towards centre-half forward position, right on the siren, and it's been the big third quarter for the Bays. They lead 20 goals, 17, 137 points. Port Adelaide, 14, 14, 98. Last quarter here at the Bay, and after a magnificent 11-goal third quarter, Grinnell, with the wind slightly against them, 39 points up. Port Adelaide throw Geneva. He certainly contributed all day. And he's still got it. Gets a kick down towards their half forward line. Seaboam under it for Gunnell. We'll take the test. John Seaboam for the Bays will swing it towards the outer side. Out there is Marshall and Kernahan. Kernahan should provide the shepherd. He does. Marshall the opportunity to drive up towards the half forward line. There's Wayne Hemwood unopposed. Good debut for the Bays today played a couple of positions, also been in ruck for a little while, up towards the full forward area, Kidney off hands towards Alan Stringer, no, back towards McGuinness, a great third quarter, McGuinness, he's tackled, couldn't get the kick away, another opportunity, Copping, who will go to ground, tackled by Ben Harris, and the umpire will ball up on the half forward line, the Bay's favour. Yeah, Stephen Copping tried the bar through, it wasn't on, the umpire's called for the ball. The bounce at about the centre half forward position for Glenelg, Stephen Kernahan contesting against Russell, Here's a chance for Walsh. Can't pick it up. Curtis rides it out the back. Not the ball down. Gee, Bay player headed into the bottom of the cheer squad. Packs there and he doesn't look too good. I think he's hurt. No, he's OK. He's getting up. Stephen Copping it is. Found himself against the black and yellow streamers. I think they, they pushed him the forward. <laughs> The throw in, Kernahan tried to tap, almost took it out of the air himself at the end. The ball loose again on the ground. Finally, Brent Nowens the handball out towards Bradley. Won't sit for him, it will now. He's got to get rid of it, he does. A hurried kick. Out of defence, marked over there by David Kernahan, who's uh, had two opponents today, probably beaten them both. His 12th kick, Bow McDermott, high towards the square. Kernahan and Copping there, Harris from behind. Steve Curtis, he goes to ground, well tackled, and the umpire will bounce up on the edge of the square. Almost ball that, but uh, I think it could also have been in the back because he was uh, jumped into, but the fact that he brought the ball to the ground, I think the umpire declared it a drawn ball. Two minutes in and Glenelg doing all the attacking again in this quarter. Johnston got it away. Bradley coming in, playing very deep. Simons, though, with a chance right along the line. Out of bounds on the floor. Tony Simons has uh, Paul Harrison as his opponent at the moment. Stephen Curtis to bring the ball back into play for Port Adelaide if they're to win this they've got to have a massive last quarter this is Stephen Curtis's first kick he's handed out a few handballs though today towards Johnson he couldn't take it it'll come off hands Harrison he goes to ground tackled by a couple of Bay players they want to hold him the ball but the umpire says no way I'll bounce it in the shade of the grandstand but it's been a magnificent day for football clear blue skies a great crowd in attendance and a great opening to the season for both sides particularly the Bay Johnston wins it, Bradley there again, right on the line, kicks it back in, almost finds Lawson, Ginova chips in, but 
far as McDermott is concerned, it ain't going nowhere. He's a tenacious player, Chris McDermott. Umpire again will throw up the ball that is towards Simons at come. He wins his way cleverly, makes room for Alan Stringer up towards the full forward area. Popping, setting himself the big fly score. Up hands to Kidney, he'll run into the open goal. Robin Kidney's got another one. That will be his first for the game, his tenth kick. And for Nelga Bay from the last quarter very well. They're 21 goals, 17. Port Adelaide, the gentleman will move out of the way he does now on 14-14. The classic Rovers goal. Tony Simons popped it over to Alan Stringer, as I recall. Looking back on the incident, Alan hung it up in the square. There was a melee of four players going for the grab. Came to Robin Kidney, and he ran it over goal, leaving Stephen Curtis in his wake. When old by 45 points as Carey goes up against Johnston. Carey won it, but it's Port Adelaide who come clear with it. Browden, long kick to the full forward position, first time this quarter. Baker couldn't take it, so Duthie clears for Benoel. Kidney contesting the ball, close to the line. Still over it, and now it goes out of bounds. In fact, it was David Kernahan. Sure. Picked up a seven, but the wrong one. Seabone high for that one. And now Port Adelaide still scrambling forward, but not for long. As out comes Duthy. Simons on the grandstand wing. Takes it in. Got plenty of runners here. Hewitt. Hewitt's kicked towards the half forward line. Looking for Henwood. Henwood turns well for a big man. Keeps it moving. Marshall in front of him. Shot from Russell. Is it too far? Too deep? An old crowd wants a push in the back decision. I think the umpire was unsighted in the sun anyway. No, it was well called by the umpire, I felt. Nothing in that one. Laurie Archer. Ball up. Henwood against Johnson. Johnson got the tap towards Lawson. No, it was Stephen Williams, he goes to ground with Brendan Owens and we'll see the ball up again in front of the grandstand here, half forward line for the Bays. Five and a half minutes gone, another throw from the umpire rather than the bounce. Henwood, the big punch, tried to get it to Simons, straight through his hand. I wonder why they're throwing it up there, would it be a bit damp or it something? It must, uh, <laughs> must be a bit soggy and a bit uneven there because the umpire certainly yeah. is not taking chances. The throw in, finds a kick from Stephen Williams quickly. Simons with the ball, Look, looks for Marshall, changes his mind, goes the other way, and here's Copping. <laughs> Stephen Copping, true centre half forward, plays it on quickly because out comes Kernahan. Oh, the kick wasn't well directed to him. Stephen turns around, he's only going to get the ball. They can do no wrong. Fennell, 22 goals, 17. Port Adelaide, 14 14. Well, isn't it remarkable when, a, when you're hot, you're hot, when you're not, you're not, as they say in the classics. In the first half, they're the sort of things Fennell weren't able to do. Now, everything they do turns to gold. Stephen Copping led forward, took a nice mark, popped it over to Stephen Kernan, didn't really get it to him properly, and Stephen did a quick uh, over, the, over the head snapshot, which rolled through. It rolled through, and uh, Donald running away with this game now, running away with it on the scoreboard. Peter Carey was beaten to the ball that time by Baker. Got it out towards Lawson. Lawson's trying to barge his way through. He's caught. Holding the ball, nice tackle applied by Stringer. It's Wayne Stringer, number 14. His brother wears number one, Allen. His 10th kick towards the outer side. Bays again into attack. Consistently done in the second half of this game. Nice mark been played back there to uh, John Simpson, who's had a, a yeah. fine game really for Port. Probably one of their better players. Been their top five for sure. He's had, had 11 kicks. And he's being asked to go back behind the line. Alan Gill gives him a chance to play it on, but he says, I'll kick it well in towards the centre of the ground. Big fly at the back, pays off. Anderson. Watch out for his left foot, he'll go away now. No. I do, but Gary yeah. was onto him. Anderson's left foot kick eventually right up towards the forward area. Scored away from behind by Duthie. Opportunity now for Bradley. He's trying to make space, concedes ground. Well, his handle wasn't good, but he'll back it up. No, eventually gets it to Lawson. Lawson has a shot for goal, but he's offline and that's been the really the story all day for Port. Their whole game has been something off down here, down the bay. They're 14-15, Glenelg 22 goals, 17. Well, it's a classic example of how, how the fortunes have sort of uh, gone in the course of this game. Now, everything Port do just doesn't work out. Whatever Glenelg do turns to gold, and uh, indicated by that shot for goal by Mark Horse just missed it. Glenelg just one bounce through. 
Eight minutes in, Chris Duthie. Kick out to the outer side. Will go out without being touched. So a kick in. Craig Bradley's on the spot. Plays on quickly. One bounce. We'll have a shot. They get it right into the square. He's looking for Russell, but a pile of Glenelg players, including Tony Hall. Is it chance and it's not come off? Off hands. Rowden, I think, had the attempt. One point only. That was smothered off hands then. 14 16. Glenelg 22 17. Chris Duthie will go towards the outer side. A nice kick out, nice drop punt, looking for Carey. He's got front spike and the super pulls one out. Plays it on quickly, Rotten Pitney. Will it sit? It does, he's away. Across through the centre of the ground, that kick a bit ill-directed, Brent Nowens, and he's off for Port Adelaide. One bounce, he's got some pace, he streaks away from Henwood. Brent Nowens up towards the full forward area, Russell Johnson's got front spot, and he's plucked one out. So an opportunity for Port Adelaide to get their first goal of this quarter. It'll be a seventh kick for Russell Johnston. Kick one goal in the first quarter. Shouldn't miss this. Ooh. Oh, and he yeah. has. <laughs> well, the story of the day, and Russell Johnston just shrugs the head and says, well, what do we have to do? It's going to be a long ride home on the Bay Tram tonight. 14-12, Port. Glenelg 22-17. Glenelg cleared away. Hewitt kicks to the grandstand wing, the outer wing. Recovery by Bradley. Long hand passes on. Ah, oh, and he come unstuck. Really Gibbs flicks it up nicely. Hewitt plays it to nobody, but keeps possession. Out of bounds. They've lost their link up port. They had good link up early between the Bradleys and the uh, the Rover boys. Jennifer and, to a lesser extent, Mark Lawson. But it's not coming from now. Away by Anderson. Will be picked up by. Seabone, he goes for a short one, he was an ill-directed kick, but he picked out McDermott. McDermott will play it on to Robin Kidney. The Bays are running this quarter, they've run for the second half of this game. Kidney's kicked to the edge of the square and uh, well over the head of Henwood. Simpson plays it on, looking for Curtis, who's come out from the back pocket to give him some ground. But that's the story, McGuinness right on his hammer. McGuinness tracks the ball, and that's the sort of attack on the ball that's given the Bays a fantastic run. They've come from 26 points down to 50 points up. Bounce up. Harrison strikes the tackle. Geneva. He's got space. He'll go short towards this grandstand side. He'll pick out Stephen Knight, the beardless Stephen Knight this year. He'll go across the centre of the Ooh, ground. It's all Marshall and Carey. He's picked out the wrong colour jumpers. Well, Carey's uh, made the mistake for that error. Picked it up to Marshall. He'll drive towards the outer side. He's looking out there for David Kernahan and popping there. Will David get there before the boundary line? He does. Goes That's backwards, easy. creates space, and finds Wayne Stringer. Stringer's shot for goal right towards the square. Stephen Kernahan forced to touch it through and go. Oh, it was, must have been over the line, and it's a goal to Wayne Stringer. He salutes it with a punch in the air. 23 goals, 17. Glenelg caught 14, 17. Well, that will really discourage Port Adelaide. Here's Wayne Stringer, a half-back flanker, coming well down the ground in pursuit of the ball, picking up a hand pass, and from there, well, not actually a hand pass, a little chip shot from... Uh, David Kernahan and lining them up and spearing it right through the middle. And uh, when those sort of things happen to you, you know it's not your day, as far as Port Adelaide is concerned. Grinnell heading for a 10-goal win at this stage, unless Port Adelaide can pull something back. Geneva has a try to move them forward. David Kernahan is there, could have got the push, not paid. Craig Bradley picks it up. Ebert's come out too far, so he's got to go deep towards Baker. Well, Johnston it is. Here's Stephen Knight with a chance. Can he pick it up? Got to go around. Handball goes nowhere in particular. Stephen Williams has got the goal that Port Adelaide so desperately need just to be able to hold up the head as they go out the gate. Four goals, Stephen Williams. A good game from him. Yes. Port Adelaide 15-17. Glenelg 23-17. Well, you'd have to say Stephen Williams has had a, a busy day. He kicked four goals, four by my records here. And he's been uh, ever alert, always around the place. And Stephen Knight mucked it up a little bit. I thought he could have probably kicked it himself initially. Stephen Williams mopped up, as you call it. And uh, a high around the corner kick found the goals. Glenelg have made a change. Peter Carey, Carey has gone off the ground and he's been replaced by Adam Garton. But Carey's worked hard all day and uh, will probably take a breather on the bench. Infringement in the centre square. And it will go the way of Glenelg. Adam and Adam Garten. Garten will drive towards the outer flank, half forward flank, Stringer in front spot. He tried to tap it on. Chase will be on. Darren Smith 
First there for Port Adelaide, can't pick it up though. Gets a push in the back decision, however, had his nose over the ball. He plays it on quickly for Bradley, who's been working all day for the Magpies. His kick over the centre. Looking for Knight. Rowden in front, recovers. Oh, gee, stiff tackling as usual, open the bays. Down they go. Tackling's been very strong by the Tigers today. So bounce up, almost in the centre of the ground. Port kicking with a slight breeze in this final quarter, but they've got a big job ahead of them. Tap forward. Bradley the tackle on McGuinness, but McGuinness gets it towards David Kernahan, back towards McDermott. McDermott getting into the game somewhat in this last quarter, towards Stephen Copping and Stephen oh, Kernahan. Oh, He's had a big job to do, but he's, he's playing it on very quickly. Ben Harris, Tim Ginova. Where's he going to go? Almost runs into his own player and finally gets a left foot kick towards the grandstand side and Stephen Knight. Stephen Knight will play it on quickly. His handball was a little wild towards Sir Brent Owens. Chance for Glenelg to get possession. Oh, too high and in the back, Stephen Knight. Ross Gibbs kick. The pressure's on as Simons kicks it over the grandstand wing. Marshall on his own. In board to Wayne Stringer. Wayne Stringer coming up from the field. He's not going to kick another one, is he? Oh, no. Darren Smith drops the sitter. Robin Kidney tackles him from behind. Too vigorous. Pushing the back. Now I guess he dropped what he should have taken then. It was almost uh, unopposed, Darren, uh, Darren Smith then. Darren Smith comes grandstand side and Tony Starman for his name written all over that one. A poor kick by Smith. Tony Simons indicates he'll go long. Get over shot. kick. No, he's going short. The lead's on copping. Nice lead by copping and a very nice disposal by Tony Simons. Stephen Copping, who today has got two goals so far. This will be his tenth kick. Both of his goals coming in the last quarter, which was the base quarter by a mile. This time he's on an acute angle. Normally a very good kick. He's put it up, it's coming back with a breeze. And you can't be much better than that, Stephen Copping. 24 goals, 17 Glenelg. Port Adelaide on 15 goals, 17. Yes, yeah, a classical angle goal by Stephen Copping. Brought about by some good interception by Tony Simons. Uh, Darren Smith tried a long kick into Tony Simon's wing. Tony chipped in, picked up the ball, took the mark, found Stephen Copping with a very neat drop punt pass, and Stephen Copping finished it off with his third goal for the game. Coming up to the 16-minute mark of the final quarter here at Glenelg, and a great first game in the league season for the base. They've extended their lead in the last quarter. 39 points at the last change. Now they're nine goals clear. Hewitt. Over the outer wing. Oh, lovely run. Walsh takes the mark over his head. Looks for Marshall. God, plays have got players everywhere. It's all over. Paul will stop running. Stephen Kernahan looks to think about a lead, but Marshall will try for the goal. And if not, it will go right into the square. 14th kick for David Marshall. He's moved into the game, particularly in the second half. And that's a boomer. 10 goals clear the base, 25-17 to Port 15-17. Well, that was a classic goal again. I mean, I'll, I'll be saying this the last couple of uh, comments I've had to make about the goals by, by the Tigers, but they are really kicking those long goals post-high where nobody can get it in the road of that, those sort of kicks. They are just... Uh, Gavin Moss was the architect of that pass to uh, David Marshall. And they are running right at the moment. So they seem to be marking unopposed and running down the field almost at will. Bay's had it five goals so far at about the halfway mark of the final quarter. Hewitt going to fire the handball out wide. Simons let it go, he does. Over towards the half forward line. Alan Stringer has got time, he's conceding ground. He ran a long way. The backup comes from Tony Simons. A nice handball to start. He will go to the pocket area. There'll be an F, uh, what a free kick down the ground. So it's still Harrison. Duck, duck, disposing of that ball by Harrison. And it'll be Stephen Copping. Take another pot shot for goal. Kicked one uh, a moment to go. He's going to go short. The lead on from Kernahan and he'll take this. <laughs> Left Van Harris standing. So Stephen Kernahan directly in front. It'll be his 14th kick for the game. So far today, he's kicked three goals, two in the third quarter and one so far this quarter in the air. He's taken six marks. 20, 30 metres out, directly in front. Stephen Kernahan. He's got four. 
And now for their romping away with this now. Good start to the season for themselves and Corns. 26-17 to Port Adelaide on 15-17. Yes, it's becoming a procession. Still has a cricket score at the moment by Glen Alton. Stephen Barrett coming on the ground for David Marshall. And Stephen Kernahan, as the boys just uh, indicated, kicked his fourth goal for the game from an unerring pass from Stephen Copping. 18 and a half minutes into the final quarter and the Bays have dominated the last three quarters of this game. 21 goals they've kicked against Port Adelaide, eight. And that's a one-way procession. Browden tries to recover something for the Magpies. Kicks it wide though, nobody there except Bay jumpers. David Kernahan running on. Geneva had to punch it away. There's so many Bay jumpers there. They're out of bounds, half forward flank for Port Adelaide. Garten in ruck against Baker for Port Adelaide. Garten takes it out of the air, has Hewitt running for him. Hewitt short pass on for Copping, spoiled by Smith this time. Pick up by Simpson, runs, runs into all sorts of bother. Now the chance for Henwood, big Henwood looking for Simons, didn't come off that time. Harrison turns, pivots and drives port towards the centre wing. He's looking for Dwayne Russell, he'll wait for the crumbs, Russell, they won't come. They do, however, for Brent no through the umpire pulls play on Curtis gets it to Dwayne Russell he'll have a shot for goal long kick and he's well offline as well and just stands and looks and says maybe next week Port Adelaide 15-18 Glenelg 26-17 Stephen Barrett's on the field by himself I'll kick it to him so Barron in the back pocket for Glenelg a short pass pays off. Gavin Walsh. Glenelg can afford to play possession football. Gavin Walsh had a good game. 14 kicks to the grandstand wing. All for that late. Shepherd in, however, against Big Wayne Henwood. It's pretty hard to shepherd him. He's a big bloke. Wayne Henwood from centre wing, grandstand side towards the pocket area. Kernahan on another lead. Going out in front of Harris. He's beaten him by two or three strides every time he's made a lead. Stephen Kernahan will drive towards the edge of the square. Oh, he came in late. I think it was Smith looked to have his name written all over that, but uh, Stephen Copping read the flight of the ball beautifully. This will be his 12th kick. And he's lining up for goal number four. He had uh, something like nine marks too. It's a great game, Rick. Stephen Copping's drop time is another one. Glenelg 27-17, that's about 179 points. Port 16-18, 108. Once again, the Glenelg forward line's running right. They're doing as they wish. A nice mark by Stephen Kernahan over in front of the grandstand. He lined up uh, on the edge of the square to Stephen Copping. And he pinpointed the ball virtually as, uh, as Rick was saying. No, Darren Smith appeared to have uh, more edge on him for that particular mark. But Stephen Copton's got long arms, and all of a sudden those arms just reached out, tucked in the the high ball, another goal. Another infringement in the square. This time it'll go to Port Adelaide, and Craig Bradley will take the kick. No, he won't. We'll leave it for Baker. It'll go to Russell Even. He uh, won't want to remember his Australian record-breaking game. That's the way Port are reading it today. His 433rd league game. Dwayne Russell, 14th kick. A long kick, a screw punt. We'll go right to the square. Ross Gibbs, little bloke in front. No, the mark's been paid to Groudon, has it? No, Ross Gibbs. So Ross Gibbs has played a good game for the Bays. He had more purchase on the ball. He likes to fly, doesn't he? He loves it. <laughs> From the back pocket, Ross Gibbs. Looking for Adam Garten. Baker over the top for Port Adelaide. Couldn't take it. Simons again. Tony Simons runs it down the grandstand wing. Given protection by McDermott. Finds McGuinness. McGuinness got time to turn around, boom it in. He's got a choice of Kernahan and Copping. Kernahan misses it, Copping ducks back, has a look, and he gets it. Fantastic football by the two players there. His fifth goal, Copping's. Quinnell, 28 goals, 17, Port Adelaide, 15, 18. Stephen Copping's third goal for the quarter and fifth for the game. Really running right for the Stephen Copping, Stephen Kernahan combination down there. They've kicked five between them this quarter. And they're just doing as they wish. And everything's running good well at the moment. 28 goals, 17. Tell the own story. 
Organ and Elg in this final quarter at the Bay as we approach full time in the final quarter. Off hands. Gavin Walsh goes through with it. Wayne Hanwood, he's had a good debut for Premiership points uh, with the Bays. Goes towards Barrett. The Bays are going backwards. There'll be a running player somewhere. There it is, Wayne Stringer. Up towards his brother, Alan. Tried to tap it on, it didn't come off. He'll pick up the crumbs, however. He's sandwiched, gets it out wider towards David Kernahan. Another good player for the Bays today. Onto that right boot. Up towards the full forward area. Coppins in front of Smith. Smith gets the punch away. Opportunity now for McGuinness. Nice little spin onto the left boot. Pops oh, it around. Right. Got it. Right. And well, oh, there's another one. <laughs> Avalanche of goals. 29 17 Glenelg. Port Adelaide for well, their history for today. 15 18. Well, I can do no wrong, Glenelg. There's David Kernang spearing the ball into the final line of attack. The jump, the jump ball. Everyone's up in the air. Down was Tony McGuinness who made up quick ground, plucked it out of the uh, hands of Chris McDermott, turned it around into a goal. It's a remarkable shot for goal, and that's how the luck of Port Adelaide's going. They, they can't even stop the goals from in, uh, oblique angles. We're going to have to start looking up the record books because this could be the biggest defeat Port Adelaide have ever suffered down at the bay. Knight pushes it forward, right to the full forward line. Duthie punches it away. Still in play, Port Adelaide back in it. Stephen Williams with a nice goal. That's a beautiful goal, and he certainly contributed today. That's Stephen Williams' fifth goal. It's his 12th kick, and he's really uh, been, a, been a lone hand in the attack in the Port Adelaide attacking area. And um, well, he hasn't given up, and that's, 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 that's a few points in his favour. But you were saying, Keith, about a record score. The Nog beat uh, Port Adelaide by 95 points down here two years ago. That is the record winning margin. A bit of a way to go yet, haven't they? Yeah, they can't quite get that today. But it might be the highest score that I've ever kicked against Port Adelaide. I'd have to say that. We're just into time on now. And the Bays have dominated the last three quarters of this game as Kidney takes it out of the middle, works his way. Somebody kicks it off the ground towards half forward. Brent Owens, who's played well on the halfback flank for Port Adelaide, clears it. Tries to find Russell Ebert, his captain, playing the record number of games in Australian football today. He can't do much. Port Adelaide can't do much at all as the Bay jumpers fall over the ball. Ball just forward of centre for Glenelg in attack yet again. Adam Garten, the young ruckman for them against Baker for Port Adelaide. Stephen Williams. Fox has one out. Russell Ebert kicks to the half forward flank. Looking for Grout and can't find him. Tony Simons again. Always finds room. Stephen Knight against him. Moves it on. McGuinness. Oh, back to the McGarry medal form of 82. No doubt about that. McGuinness is through punt. Left kick right to the square almost. Another chance for Stephen Copping. There's nobody. Oh. He's missed that one. Rare to see Glenelg miss in the latter half of this game. They're 29 goals, 18 now, Port, 16-18. Yep. And prior to that, missed that kick, nine goals straight this quarter. It's remarkable, isn't it, football? Tremendous courage there by Groudon to get across. Hard mark to take late in the game. His fifth kick for the day gets it to the grandstand wing. Baker could have been paid the mark. Out comes Dwayne Russell. Big kick forward, one-on-one -on -one here. Anderson against Kernahan. Playing a fine game, David Kernahan. Certainly won that wing. 16th kick goes out wide towards Mark Hewitt. Taps it in front of him. Beat Geneva to the ball. He's got time. Go over the top to Ross Gibbs. A lot of the defenders for Glenelg now getting right upfield. A lot of confidence to Tony Simons. He'll run into the goals. Onto the right boot. He lines him up. And there's another one. That's goal number 30 for Glenelg. <laughs> 30 goals, 18. Port Adelaide, 16, 18. An avalanche of goals by the Bays. But uh, that's the 20th kick for Simons. It's not their biggest score down here because they kicked 49 goals, 23. 1975 against Centrals. I'd have to say it'd be Glenelg's biggest score against Port Adelaide, though, without question. 30 goals, uh, 18. I'm oh, pretty sure of that one. And Tony Simons is on the wrong side of the ground then, but uh, so what? <laughs> he took the mark and kicked the goal. All the bays in this first game of the season. Big percentage win coming up as well. The smash by Baker towards their half forward line. It's rarely been down this end at all for Port. Dawson will win the free kick. Play allowed to go on. Brown and Dock. He's playing bad. Kick. A shocker. Lucky to even get a point by Brown. And even he can't believe it. So another minor score for Port. 16-19 they are. 
Vanell 30-18. Actually, David Grant stopped in his tracks thinking the, gun, the ball would be uh, brought back to the, to the free kick position, but it's the advantage being played. Great kick out by Duthie. Simons high on the wing here. Tony Hall on to Simons again. Simons kicked the half forward. Curtis is in front. Scott McGinnis chips in front of him though and takes it over. Curtis beautifully. There's the style. Looking for Henwood. He's a big man. And out comes the ball for Port Adelaide. Working hard. Curtis on to Harrison. Harrison takes it through the centre. In the way, John C. Fennell plays running. Seabohm goes for the long hand ball towards David Kernahan. Adam Garton chips in. There's uh, yellow and black jumpers everywhere. Hewitt's made a rare mistake, but he'll tap it on towards Garton. He picks up now. No, he's dropped it. Sock it off the ground. Tempt by Bradley. Stephen Williams finally will see a ball up. Fennell had another big opportunity there to go into attack. Maybe a little bit keen now. Wanting to go before they've actually got hold of the ball. At one stage in this game, Port Adelaide were more than four goals up, and now we see an amazing scene. I think even the base supporters would be just a little surprised to find themselves 14 goals clear as we go to the 29-minute mark of the last quarter. David, David Kernahan yet again. Played on quickly to McDermott. Henwood. Oh, he ducks and weaves. He's fast for a big man. A little short chip to Stringer. He can't pick it up. Oh, dives over the ball. Now the ball's moved forward by Wayne Stringer. Kidney. Kidney turning, got a high one. Play it on, says the umpire. Alan Stringer. Hewitt gets a goal. Unbelievable. 31 goals, 18. Support 16, 19. Another 11 goal quarter by the Bays. And they're irrepressible at the moment. There's Mark Hewitt coming up from his half-back flank. He's the second half-back player to kick a goal today. Wayne Stringer early in the piece, uh, Jag one. Alan Stringer fed it over, unopposed, Wayne, uh, Mark Hewitt, left foot of the screw. They're making a mockery of this last quarter. Back to the centre of the ground, Garten and Baker. Baker got the tap, Ginevra streaks away for Port Adel, goes short towards uh, player there is Stephen William, Williams. Stephen Williams, who's been one of the contributors in the port side, along with this fellow, Ginova, towards Greg Anderson. Can he break away? His left foot kicks a wobbly old one, but he's found Bradley. No, over Bradley's head, he picks up. Turns. He's going to have a look and come back towards Greg Anderson. He sits down to take the mark. He'll be at centre-half forward position, and this will just be practice. Port Adelaide, have, uh, kick. Port Adelaide have added just two goals in this last quarter against the Bays 11. They've had uh, what little breeze there is. Perfect conditions. And Anderson from centre half forward lines it up and it drifts away and that's been the story all day for the Magpies. 16-20 now for Glenelg's 31-18. Yes, yeah, so last shot for goals only for academic purposes. Uh, the game was well over even when this last quarter started, unfortunately for Port. And Glenelg are really run right this last quarter. Harrison's getting that over the shoulder there of Tony Simons and Simons will take the free kick on this grandstand side. Little big crowd here, Bay supporters. Had a great opening to the season. Alan Stringer, Mark not paid, they call play on, he's held on to. Didn't have possession, the umpire will pay that to uh, Alan Stringer in the centre of the ground. Stephen Knight a little frustrated. Yes. Now's not the time to be. That's all it can be, frustration at this stage. So Alan Stringer's got McGuinness over here, all by himself. And McDermott. Three Bay players, <laughs> McDermott. I think Port must have gone home. McDermott will go over the top. Paul McGuinness uh, takes it off the body of Barrett. Gives it across to Hewitt. This could be Hewitt's second. No, he's going to give it back to McGuinness. Great start of the season by the Bays. 31 goals, 18, 204 points. Defeating Port Adelaide on 16 goals, 20.